Hey guys, Coach Adam talking to you again today with James Ayat from Team Atlas. We did this the other day at Coach's Corner. It seemed to be well perceived and everyone wanted to, you know, keep asking questions. So we figured, hey, he's in Vegas. She's checking out Laura Lee today. So why not do another another uh, episode? So Perfect, let's do it. Yeah, so we got a bunch of questions on Instagram uh, in the past couple of days. So can I go through like the good ones and we'll just kind of, you know, answer them as we go. Kind of just like, uh, yeah, you know. yeah. So thank you guys for sending them in. Keep sending them in because I'm sure we'll do this again. Um, but right now James is in Vegas. We hung out last night, went to a, we went to a good dinner and then a crappy show. <laughs> that Wasn't was, that great, yeah. It was a terrible show. Oh my God. We're, we're going to see a magic show tonight, so hopefully that's a little bit better. Yeah, we saw Illuminate. If you're in Vegas, it's not the one we recommend, yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was the most awkward. Two stars, Max. Two stars. That was so cr- the, the hosts were so cringe, man. It was so, I felt bad. I felt, actually felt bad that I took you there because I thought it was going to be great and we couldn't get in the like coffee field. I know. It was just, I was <laughs> we were just talking like, after the show. We're like, dude, if we sat down for like an hour, we can make the show much better. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're just like thinking like entrepreneurs. Like we can like make the show so much better if we just like <laughs> Just read the audience, man. Yeah. So anyway, so we got some questions from you guys and um, we'll just jump right into it. Someone asked how, how, how both of you manage training in peak week for bikini. Okay. Yeah, that's quite I think we should kind of elaborate on that question. Just like, how do we typically do peak week? I think yeah. that'd be like a better thing. So. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to have some, diff- some we're going to defer on that a little bit yeah. too. So that's kind of cool. Um, so for me, I try to keep peak weeks to a minimum. I try to like really minimize things that I do. And so it's a predictable outcome. Um, when I was younger and I was like really into, I guess as I've gotten like older into this, this stuff, I've gotten to less of the science and more what works. Because I used to be like so tied to the science and like married to it that it would limit me from doing things. So like I would say whatever. Well, this study said that this happens when you do this, and I would be like tied to it, and I would yeah, never but just change. Yeah, just just to kind of put something in there too. Like, there's not really any specific studies on bodybuilding and yeah. peaking because it's not like you know, um, <clears throat> it's not something that you're gonna really make money on these studies. Like a lot of these things, like if you're curing like a disease or something, right? It's like there's a financial benefit, but for bodybuilding studies, it's kind of just out of someone's pocket. And also, like, if if this like there is a scientific approach, obviously, to you know all this and kind of how things work. But if you're just like following basic, um, you know, mathematics or protocols or whatever, then you should be able to peak every athlete 100. percent You should be able to make yeah. infinite pros out of everyone. And there's not one coach in the world that can do that because it doesn't exist. So. Yeah, that's a good point. And you see a lot of the guys who are married to that science stuff, they never produce. No, they the never, level. never, yeah. never. Like you'll have like they'll be like the most respected exercise or nutrition scientists or whatever like online and they'll try to prep people and they can't produce a pro win yeah and i have to be like ever yeah, yeah. we kind of touched this on the last podcast but like if you go like a nutritionist and they die you down for a show i've never really seen yeah success in that so yeah so you're gonna have to like let go of those that's a, it's a handcuff you know more than anything so um you know practical application experience is always what comes into it and so when i was younger i used to go in and i do everything i do like sodium manipulation I would do, you know, water loading, you know, this crazy carb. You still water load or no? No, I don't do any of that anymore. Yeah, I kind of keep water consistent. You know what's funny, kind of about like, kind of like amateur shows, you see this a lot. I, mean, I used to do the same thing as him. I used to like try to like, you know, um, do as many things as you can to try to get like a little one percent better. Yeah. And like at the amateur shows, you'll see the most um, kind of like people trying to do things. So like you always see like on Instagram stories of like go like. Five liter gallon, uh, or not five, no, f- um, five gallon, but like a five liter bottle, whatever. So I'm Canadian, like <laughs> huge thing, like all oh, water loading and stuff like that too. And a lot of the top teams like don't don't do that because it's kind of like yeah. when you're when you're when you're trying to. But this is like I, th- I feel like that's something like every new coach needs to go through. It's yeah. kind of like try all the things, and then when you realize that like the basics is always better, then you kind of like just go back to it. Like that's how it is. Yeah, and I've that was always the thing. I was like, well, maybe I can get one percent, two percent better out of someone, right? But then the risk was so high. Like sometimes you can. Yeah. But you're not going to be consistent getting one percent better. That's the problem. Better. Yeah. And so like that was always the issue was like I want a predictable outcome, that way I can manipulate things the next time. Not really caring so much about this time, but I'm going to work with this person for 20 shows for their whole career. Like how do I create a predictable outcome if I don't know what's causing whatever to happen? And if I'm doing 10 things in a peak week, I don't know which one of those too many factors is causing yeah. whatever happened to happen last time. So then what are you going to do? Eliminate one and wait 10 shows to figure out what it is. No. And, you know, so it's just, it just makes sense to just, and so as I've gotten more and more and more, I've been like, just get leaner. Like don't try to manipulate everything, just get leaner and then load them consistently. Like if you saw like, you know, people know me and, and like, well, the, the people know us from our, like our top people sometimes, right? So they know me for like Ashley and, you know, Phoebe and Anya. If you see like, 
uh, Frida too. Frida's peak weeks are a lot, a lot different. She's a little harder, I'll say. But like, yeah, but you always have been working her that long. Yeah. The more show, like Ashley, like you should be able to nail her every time because you've done so many shows. Like it's easy. Yeah. Like I'm sure it's easy now. Yeah, and hers are so easy. Like yeah. her peak weeks, the last couple of them have been so easy now. We got it so nailed. You probably just point. know like her weight. Like if you're at this weight, you look good. Yeah. Like you probably go off that by now. And it's well, it's so predictable too. You know, at yeah. first we would like be a little bit more hesitant on bringing carbs in, but now we know to bring them in a little bit more. And now we know that if we if we do. Um, like a like a normal load for someone maybe like two days before a show you start loading them like for her she might she starts getting a little bit puffy when she has that many so we just do it less for longer period of time so now we do like two days at like 35 carbs per meal and then like two days at like 20 carbs per meal and that's like her peak week and that's like it and everyone's like what are you doing with this and that and I'm like literally <laughs> She's got like 35 carbs, like Tuesday, but and also Wednesday, like, and then Thursday. She's Friday, always like, so full to like her glutes. Like you, you've never seen Ashley's glutes flat before. Yeah. I've never seen Ashley. So it's like when you have a lot of muscle density too, you can get away without, with, with less. eating less too. Totally. Yeah. And then you have someone like, you'll have someone like Laura Lee who's just like burns through. Like, yeah. Yeah. You got to feed her like a zillion and keep water in the whole time and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So, so for me, it's like, it's just whatever is going to be consistent and whatever I can have a predictable outcome with where I can use that data for future ones, then that's how I'm going to do it. And, you know, but the water is pretty consistent. The only time we do anything with water at all is like the day of the show. We just do like sips of water. Um, but I think it depends on the athlete too, for sure. Yeah. I'm sure like you have some ectomorph athletes that like um, need to be drinking all day long. Yeah. Like for example, at the, I had a regional show where my, uh, my Asian girl won the overall and then I had another girl won the Masters overall on the same show. The, the Masters bikini athlete, um, she was a, like crazy ectomorph. She was eating like 3,000 calories on show day and drinking the whole time. And the Asian girl, I had her like drink nothing and eat so little. Cause they're and they both look really good, yeah, because, yeah. but their body is like totally different. So you can't just like, I look, you can't just follow like one approach and just you should like, you you too. You coach like so many athletes. You kind of like just can tell their body like if they stay full easily or they they eat a lot of foods yeah. like. And I find like ectomorphs are actually hard harder to peak because their body flattens out so fast. And you gotta like watch them and like feed them every hour. And, like it's like they can be finished. Yeah, what I've what I've found is too is like when people usually when people show up like messed up on show day where they're holding water or looking soft and puffy it's usually always the water they took diuretics before the show or they just didn't do water for a long period and if they're flattened out it's like it's like let's give you some water let's see how you look you know because that's the one thing that happens fast like carbohydrates when you're loading someone with carbohydrates it doesn't happen like right away it, it takes a while for that to like kick in and absorb into the, to the muscle but water it's like you see it like really fast you know so that's usually like the approach i'll start with okay how are you looking okay let's let's give you some water let's give you like 12 ounces let's see what happens and then like, that's kind of like something you can just kind of eyeball but yeah so for me it's about being predictable i don't know if you have anything that you do because i used to do sodium and, and carb reloads like really close to the show and it's pain steaks like, and I, stuff like yeah like i last time i used like a hamburger like in a between like like 2019. Okay, like, so I'm glad you're on the same page. Yeah, <laughs> because like I, rare. That is so crazy to me that people do that because, okay, so I'm glad that you're on the same page as that. The, um, here's the <clears throat> thing about that whole hamburger reload that everyone does, and, and bodybuilders still do it, and I think it's so crazy because these bodybuilders that typically do that are like the hardcore ones, and these are the ones that are like eating tilapia and asparagus only, like going into a show. So they haven't had gluten in their diet, they haven't had any you know wheat in their diet, they haven't had any of these things in their diet, um, and then they go like, for 16 weeks, not eating this stuff, and then they, the day before the show, they eat. You gluten. eat like tons of stuff that you haven't eaten in your diet for so long. Yeah, of course you're gonna have some digestion issues with it. But like, this is, it's so funny because like this is most like the amateurs try to try to, they try the hardest. Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. Like so like you see amateurs like oh like I, and I'm sure you did this too when you were you first started coaching, giving them hamburgers. We were like one show like five years ago when I first started coaching, I had like 20 people, and like 10 of them I gave them hamburgers and fries. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's just like you don't know what's going on, so you yeah. have to like learn, and you realize like less is more, and you should be feeding them into the show the foods that you know that they uh, digest well. And you wanna have control over all the factors. And if you're kind of just throwing food at them that you don't um, you know, have data on, that, you're, that you know that they digest well, you're playing with fire. Yeah. It could be better, but maybe not. Yeah. And, and like also, like as far as like a, a diuretic type thing, like I just wanna kind of go back one second. Like if you're lean enough, you don't need diuretics for a show. Yeah. And like I never use um, diuretic for bikini, maybe a little bit of expel. Yeah, me too. Like a little bit, it's still strong. Like expel is it's still strong. Still, you flatten it's someone very out with strong. Like ex people don't understand like expel. It's a natural diuretic you can buy like on Amazon, whatever. Um, that's like you. That's more than enough for bikini. Like you, I'd never seen a bikini athlete. I was holding so much water. You have to like give them like extra stuff. That's like you know, like and like, expel. I think it's just like um, it's like dandelion, dandelion extract, exactly, and a little stuff, bit of yeah. caffeine. Yeah. Like that's enough for like for bikini conditioning. You don't got to go above me at that. And, and like even too, like when I first started coaching, I would give like a little bit of diuretics here and there because you're trying to like do more and better, but you, the results, yeah. it doesn't, 
it doesn't it doesn't produce the results that you that you actually want over long periods of time. You want yeah. control over everything. Yeah, and if it if you're holding water, just double check that it's not you're holding body fat. fat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if you're holding body fat and you try to put direct, you're gonna look you're gonna look worse. flat and fat. It's yeah. like a it gets, awful. It, yeah, it multiplies the fat like yeah. by, by a lot. Like when you're holding water, it's because you like flew from California to Florida, and then you were lean when you were on the flight, and then when you landed, then you're like now you're puffy, right? That's when you're holding water. You didn't like get on the flight <laughs> like, yeah. like like soft. You know, it's pretty rare that like if you've been working out hard and you're sweating a lot and you're doing all these things that you're holding water the entire time. Like it's there's some people that do that. You know, there's some people that do that. You look at it like a Frida. She's like really water retentive. You know, but like it's. It's, it's funny that I'll see it happen all the time, especially with like the guys. The guys are the worst at this though. They're like, oh, I'm just holding water, I'm holding water. Yeah, I'm like, like, dude, no, you haven't been like lean out, yeah. this whole time. What are you talking? I haven't seen, you know, like that, that deep conditioning ever. So then they just kind of over diuretic and so. But also like you should be able to step on stage with just your normal like daily, daily like routine of food and everything like one, two weeks out. Like you should just, like, if you need to manipulate so many things in peak week, you messed up. Like yeah. you, you messed up. Like if I'm like peak week, I'm like, oh, change this, change this. I'm like, we, we went somewhere wrong. So what I like to do, I don't know if I like to, I like to get girls ready two to four weeks out. And then I actually like to reverse diet, diet them into the show. So that their oh, yeah. body, like, if you're like, let's say an athlete's doing like two hours cardio and like up until like the last day of the show, their body's gonna look tired and like worn out on stage. Yeah. But if they're ready a little bit in advance, you kind of give them more food, drop their cardio and like, kind of like their food goes up and their cardio goes down. And, and, and on the show day, their body's gonna look refreshed. Plus you have a lot more time to be able to like test their body with carbs and like, like you do like trial little peaks and you see how they look with more carbs. So too, instead of just like one day out, you're like, okay, let's just try something over the best. Yeah, I'm the same way. I try to do, this is because what I found too is like, um, I try to have people ready about two weeks out yeah. from a show. That's like my ideal time frame is like two weeks out. And then at like 10 days out, I'll start like the initial carb load. And I'll be like, you know what? Because... But also, like, if they gain weight with that, then you know, like, you should, like, back off, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you test it. What happens is, this is this is the, the I'm glad that you do it, too, because we we're actually doing a lot of things the same. The, um, Are you copying my protocol? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. If it works, I'll copy it. <laughs> I'll, um, so, the, when, um, when I have someone who's, let's say I'm, like, getting them ready just in time for the show, and, like, I have two days before the show, and I start loading them with carbs... Well, now I'm, now I'm worried they're going to spill over. I'm worried they're going to have a bad reaction. And then it's too late after. Cars, and there's nothing yeah. you do. You have no time to correct. But if you're, if you're, let's say, this is, so my goal isn't to just get someone like lean before the show and get them ready like two weeks before. I actually want to get them too lean kind of. That's, that's always the goal. Get them a little too lean, like just a hair too lean. And then I can just feed them like crazy and then let them spill over a little bit that's for a so couple funny. days. I do the same thing too. Do you? Yeah. yeah. It's, and it gives them, cause, because also you can, you don't know how someone looks until you test all the all the weights, right? Yeah. Like, so let's say like, let's say like for example, like someone looks at like 133 and you wanna drop to 131, maybe they can look a little bit better leaner, but they're like, ah, I pushed a little bit too far. Then you like just bring up the weight a bit. So like you can test like different looks when you have time to do that. Yeah, exactly. I do the exactly yeah. the same thing yeah, too. Yeah, so if someone, it, it'll be different for like different, uh, for different people, but for, for a lot of them, you know, cause they're, you know, bought bikini, they want fullness now, you yeah. know? So, um, so here's, here's kind of the, the variables, I guess, on that. Like if, if I have a bikini girl who's really muscular, well then, yeah, I won't do that because yeah, yeah. then she's gonna get crazy jacked. You know, if you fill out 100. Mm -hmm. percent But let's say I have a girl who's I know still needs to grow. I'm like, look, you're still small compared to whoever. Well, let's get you too lean, and then let's just fill you out 110. <laughs> percent We know you're gonna spill over a little bit, but you're gonna be so lean you're, you need to spill over a little bit. But at least we'll know we have 100 percent of your muscle full. So then I'm, for that girl, I'm gonna load her like 10 days out, like super, super hard. And then I'll see what happens. I'll have enough time to see what happens. And if she spills over and gets all totally water retentive, then whatever. And then the other the other side of it is, let's say the girl's she is you know someone who doesn't need to be 100% full. Well, when I give her carbs 10 days out, and she has that. Some people have this initial like carb load, where they're really water retentive right after that carb load, and it might, it might last them like four Didn't days. Did you say Anya does that? That's Anya. Um, she you, does too. Yeah. She yeah. You said too. you told me like she like you have to load her and she like you kind of have to like reduce going to the show. Yeah. We exactly. Yeah. We'll reduce her. We'll start early and then reduce her going into the show. And she goes into the show. I mean, probably could be fuller. Um, the the last because the last day we're really light on food. We're like super light on food on like Friday. So yeah. yeah, and it's do you so, cut vegetables or what do you do? Um, yeah, what about so fiber and stuff. Towards the end, towards the <clears> end, I always want to make sure that like their digestion is really good. Um, so we'll add like fibers and stuff like that, like the last week. Just make sure they're really regular, because you know when you're. No, I'm saying, do you cut them? The fibers? No, we'll keep them in for the most part. We'll keep them in. We want to make sure they're staying regular. The problem that you run into, like with Peak Week, you probably run into this too, is like when someone's eating like mostly protein only diet. Yeah, they're not going to the bathroom. They're not going to the bathroom. Yeah, so. Generally during peak week, like when you introduce a lot of carbs, then they'll start going to the bathroom right away. Yeah, but sometimes but, they still get even more blocked. I feel yeah. like, like even like one of my male athletes, I like been like 
I give like three hundred days in a row. It's like I can't go to the bathroom. That's, it's like yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have those one offs, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll like to make sure that their digestion is really good that last week, and we'll add psyllium husk if they need it, like psyllium husk or senna or something like that. Um, just make sure the digestion's good because you, you know you're trying to get their waistline super super small. So that's why I don't know if we'll defer on this a lot too, but like the day before the show, I will do any hard to digest foods like. Like obviously the burger and fry would be a hard one, but like any even like red meats. Some coaches are like swear by the red meat before the show. I don't like. Anything. I don't like. I don't think I've ever done that. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, no, keep it easy to digest. Keep it what your body's used it's to. It's in your stomach too. Yeah, because like, it takes so long to digest that. We're just trying to create the smallest waste. I'm not gonna so. throw like different foods there like in the day before. Yeah, like, never. Like I, I test like uh, like the protein. Like usually egg whites. Like uh, people like would bloat in, so I don't give egg whites on show day, and I don't give vegetables on show day either because it's like you're gonna you don't want gassy foods that are gonna bloat your stomach. You want to keep your stomach super tight, and that's why you don't drink a lot of water too. But yeah, like typically, like I'll see if they react better to rice. Usually, people react ninety five percent. My ninety five percent people react fine to rice and digest it. I like to use white or white uh, jasmine or basmati rice. Like yeah, yeah. some girls would, um, react better to. It's like it's all literally like um, how they digest it. Like that's how they feel. If their stomach feels like full after, like you gotta like um, kind of like ask the athlete how they feel after each yeah. meal, and then you can kind of like eliminate. So the athlete's like, I'm so bloated. I'm like, okay, well, tell me how you feel after every meal, and then we'll kind of be able to eliminate the food, um, you know, over time by just like. You know, realizing which food is bloating you. If you, if you, you, you can tell which foods are bloating yeah. you if you if you check after every meal. And that comes to the athlete too. And I'll tell the athlete like, use your best non-bloating source of carbs, and you should be. Yeah, that's all you I'm should like. know. It could be know? white potato. It could be rice. It could be sweet potato. Like you know, yeah, what I'm saying. Like, I give them like the four, like it's like four or five options of carbs, but it's like it's like. Do you use rice cakes like, or no? Yeah, I, I don't. You know what the thing is? The rice cakes though is like we need so many carbs that these girls are just eating rice all the time. And it's like, I don't know if the, the volume ends up being more or what, but some people digest it really well and some people don't. I like never use rice cakes anymore. I used to, yeah. I feel like I feel like it doesn't do anything. Like you can't fill someone on rice cakes. I feel like- This is just so no, many. You need yeah, so but, many. Yeah, that, yeah. it's like the volume is so big. And plus it's like, there's no water in it. I feel like the water from the rice, yeah. like just like cooking, it actually helps like, like load. Yeah, it's part of, I think it's part of the digestion. Yeah, for sure. They say yeah. like, they say every gram of carbohydrate needs 2.7 grams of water mm -hmm. to be absorbed. Yeah, and like rice so cake like, is dry, right? Yeah. So it doesn't do anything unless so you you're need, like- like keep yeah. drinking a ton of water if you're eating like four bags of rice I used to use that a lot but now I never anymore yeah I only use it now like on show day because it's convenient yeah it's you know, light like, too it's light too yeah, yeah is it, it, but um, do you use like jam and stuff or no no I use um, so like show day we'll use like honey and then the rest of the time it's just mainly carbs and then sometimes during the show do you day, use sugar all the time um, I feel like I'm interviewing you. <laughs> I'm not interviewing, but like interrogating you. I'm like, so do you use, do you use sugar a lot? Of <laughs> so on show day, we'll use like honey. Um, usually it's like four things on show day. Like show day, we don't do like hardly any protein at all. It's mainly just carbs and fats. Um, so it's, um, we'll do like. Yeah, I agree. I don't, uh, protein like none. Oh, like why add more volume that's not going to do anything yeah. for the muscle that day, you know? So um, it'll be like almond butters, any nut butters for the most part that people digest. Well, like for, like for example, like, uh, like Ashley can't do certain nut butter. So she does good with cashew nuts because we did a- I like coconut oil test. too. Yeah, oils. So anything that's like easy. So oils, nut butters, um, rices, sweet potatoes, honeys, like day of the show. Those are like pretty much it. Yeah, um, I know that a lot of people use jam and stuff too because it's like easy carbohydrate to get in. So I do something a little bit differently. I try to avoid sugar as much as I can. That's what I try On to do. On yeah. yeah, I try to like, if I, I honestly haven't used sugar in a long time. Unless like, the only time I use it is like, if I'm, if the athlete is like really behind, um, on their like on their peak, which is like the coach's fault. Like if your athlete's like really flat on show day, it's kind of like your fault because you didn't gauge yeah, it yeah. properly. Then you kind of have to catch up with like sugar and stuff like that too. So I haven't done that in a in a long time actually. But I remember like and uh, to kind of just go back one second like jams and stuff too. Like artificial sweeteners like hold so much water. Yeah. You realize oh, that too yeah, or no? Totally. Yeah, it's kinda, ridiculous. Last week I have like last week do artificial of, sweeteners too. Yeah. So it's like I remember in 2018 when I made a few pros. Like I was having them eat like. Like, like Smucker's jam backstage, like tons of artificial sweeteners and like watery. And you're like, man, what is it? I don't get it. Loaded, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, because you crazy, don't, yeah. like, and actually it's so funny, like how I met Jennifer Dory was, I saw her backstage in 2018 at, at, at um, Vancouver and she eating like two Snickers bars or something like that. And it's like, that's that's what we're talking about before. It's like, you haven't eaten like, um, you know, you know, weed and gluten and, you know, red meat and stuff too. And then you eat like, let's, and like the um, chocolate bars, you're eating like lactose on show day. And that's like the worst thing for you. Like lactose, like, when you haven't eaten for a long period of time. Yeah. Like, I'm sure you guys have like diet for a long period of time and you have like a protein bar and that like ruins you for like three oh, yeah. days. Like, I, I know me and protein bars, like when I diet, I know I know I don't diet in a long time, don't worry, but <laughs> I'm saying, but like I would eat protein bar, I'm like, I, I ruined me for three days. Up. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the thing you, you don't, don't eat understand. Cho chocolate and chocolate show day, I haven't done that in like no, three, no, four I years. No, I don't do that, yeah. yeah. The, the only problem I've had with, and, and honestly, like when you talk about like that pre This is why we need a three hour podcast. Yeah. <laughs> there were like one, one know, question right? is like 45 minutes. <laughs> We do that like pre, so like the pre-show pump, you know, um, that's the only time I'll do like the honey and maybe in the morning. Do you pump like everyone or no? Not everyone, no. Especially like, especially the, the shoulders tells me a lot, you know? Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like and full, a, you're like, know, like their arm vein too. If like mm. they have like that deep arm vein, I'm like, you don't want to, we don't want to get that any crazier, you know? So then that person might not get honey or something. But the only problem I've had with, with um, honey, and I've had it happen, I want to say two times, maybe three times. Where someone went hypo on stage, you know, where they're like, you, like they get that blood yeah, sugar rush. That's and the worst. And, and they like, start sweating. Oh. That's happens to a lot of bodybuilders. So it's yeah. like, like you, you haven't eaten sugar a long time. Like your, your, um, your blood sugars like rise and then you like, you feel good. And then they drop yeah. while you're posing. While you're posing. Start yeah. sweating. You feel like you're fatigued. You like, that's, that's also another reason why too. And like, that's also like, you don't want to, ha- yeah, you don't want to go hypo on stage. Yeah, that's like, happened, that was probably the I've worst had thing. had it happen twice. And I was like, damn dude, it was like, it happened twice. Um, but it's been twice in like, you know, thousands of preps. So it's yeah, like. Yeah. But um, yeah, but that's definitely a possibility. So if I can get away from it, then I will. But if someone's 100% full on show day, then you don't really need so much of it, you know? Yeah. So um, I'll generally try to counter the counter the honey with some fats too, because you won't get such yeah, a yeah, big spike. Yeah, it'll slow down, yeah, slow digestion, down the digestion yeah. of it. So then I'll, if I could do almond butters in the mornings and almond butters before that, and then a little bit of honey, then I'm usually okay. But if I do carbs only that day, then I'm, I throw honey at it without the fats. Then but I'm also like, some I'm people trouble. only react good to carbs and no fats too. Like yeah. I'm sure, yeah. So you have to like, this is what you have to gauge. I feel like ectomorphs will typically react better to fats too, because it's like, if you give an, if you don't know what ectomorph is, it's like someone who's kind of like taller, lankier, like has a very fast metabolism, someone you're kind of like feeding 3,000 calories a day on, like going into peak week. And if you just feed this type of person like carbs, they're gonna burn through it so fast. So it's kind of like, you don't want some of the metabolism to be so fast because that makes their peak so much harder, I feel like. So if you actually throw in some fats, it's higher calories than carbs and it's gonna slow their uh, digestion down a lot better. And you actually control how they, they look. Plus an ectomorph, just giving them carbs, they don't really fill out. Like you need to give them some fats, yeah, I feel. Yeah, for sure. I had yeah. a girl at the last, it was crazy, The um, at USA, she got her pro card and it was, I gave her so much, she's an ectomorph, and I gave her so much fat. I like felt bad how much fats I gave her the day before the show. And like she came to the show, and she, we were filling her up the whole week, yeah. we're trying to catch up. She just got leaner and leaner, yeah, better, I hate that. started yeah. getting leaner and leaner. I was like, dude, what's going on right now? And then she posed, like, I, I ended up getting there, like, um, it's like, I don't know, it was like 40 hours or something mm-hmm. before the show, something like that. And I, she posed, and I was like, dude, you're so tight. I'm like, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to eat even more. Okay. And I think that whole, I had two, two ectomorphs. Um, and they had like the week of the show, like had both of them had over seventy tablespoons of nut butter the week of the show. And I was like, I couldn't. They just kept spe- they started speeding yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What that, happened? This is so crazy. It's, Sometimes it's, just happens. See, that it doesn't make that up. doesn't make any sense with science too. Like, yeah. when you're like when your body fat's really low, you've been dying for a long time. Your your metabolism should be very slow. Yeah. Sometimes like they just like speeds up at the end. and You're like, what's going on? Yeah. You feed. They've been dieting. Yeah. And then you give One them time, food. Like, and they just start boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. It's One crazy. time in 2019, I had a bikini pro. Um, since I saw her in person on the Wednesday, the show was Saturday. I'm like, fuck, she's too lean. So like, I kept feeding her. I, I literally, she, had, she brought a toaster. She bought a toaster from like Walmart, put in her room. She's eating toast, Nutella, like, <laughs> like maybe I five to 6,000 orange juice, just trying to get calories in. And she ended up having flawless conditioning and fullness on stage. Wow. Just because yeah. I had to feed her so much. Because like, if you don't feel like, then she'll wake up like hard. I'm like, shit. Like you have to like, Feed them so much to like kind of like even like almost like add body fat back. Like yeah. it's like, but if you're doing that like one day out, then like, I swear to God, it like never works because yeah. it's like they just like hold it all in their waist. Yeah, it's yeah. um yeah, it's it's pretty rare. I had um, I've had it I've had it work uh, maybe a couple times when it was like you fed them so much because they're just, I mean they're just burning through stuff. It's a lot easier to do in person too. Like yeah, kind of yeah. like online like overfeeding someone, it's like it's a lot more risky. I feel. I, you know what I'll do it's, if I'm. If I'm questioning it, and this is kind of a trick that it's mm-hmm. worked for me, um, like let's say I have someone like Europe or something like that, or I can't be at the show, is if it's like really close and I can't, I'm questioning it, I'll have them just do like a check-in video, like of just like their stomach, <laughs> and like their or just like their like their torso, their glutes to like to like here. And I might just get really close to the camera and do your whole posing routine type of thing, and that really helps too to like see it. Yeah, so I do it. So far, I do the same thing. So like I'll, <laughs> I do it video, like because I even like in the hotel room, like I'll have girls like post far away and post closer because you can like. It's a difference. Like sometimes girls like further away look a lot leaner. So like if you notice that too or no, like if you pose like a girl like on the stage, you're like shit, she's too lean, but on the hotel room she look like really good. Yeah, the only time I get messed up on stage, um, when I when it is like when it's like you can't you don't suspect the lighting's gonna be so hard. Yeah, and, and then, then, you're, then you're like, like shit, she's way too lean. And like everyone looks yeah, way too lean. Yeah, and then like she was taking pictures with like sunlight room or something and yeah. you like didn't catch it, and then like, that's the only time I run into that. It's like that those hard hard lights and I'm like, damn it, she's too lean or like you know. That. Do you ever have athletes like pinched her stomach or pinched her legs or anything like that too? Um, no, not so much. Um, I'll just do the close ups, the close up okay. videos. I feel yeah. like sometimes also if you want to like kind of like know if you're holding water or fat, if you if you can like just grab your skin and there's like not any like tissue in there, like like fat feels different than water. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you notice that or too? Like, if you can like actually like if 
if you're like a girl, whatever, even a guy, you can like grab like your leg and there's like still like a chunk of like fat, like water, you're not gonna hold. It's gonna feel kind of like looser skin type of thing instead of like actual body fat, if you're oh, yeah. like in the leg. Yeah, no, I've never done it that way. I, um, I, I, yeah, just, I, I feel like some people just have like thicker skin. So I've always had a hard time like deciphering yeah. between that. I've seen people do that. And I just never could figure that part of it out. I was always like, I just like to, I always look at it visually, just whatever it visually is. Mm -hmm. And if it's, if they're still holding some water and some of it's fat, I'm just like, well, you're probably gonna be holding that much water on shorty, so let's get you leaner. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, exactly, it's like, yeah. it's like, it always comes down to just getting them in shape. I think at the end of this, the, this whole peak week thing, it just comes down to. I was talking to Lily about shape, Lily at breakfast yeah. this morning and she's like trying to explain to like one of my other athletes that it's like, even like her, like when she grabs her own leg, like she, she feels now she has no fat in her leg, right? Cause she like feel her muscle. Oh, yeah. But before like, she feels like there's still like a layer of fat, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. on her on her hamstring, you can kind of like feel the difference. You know what's funny too is um, like these top people like have all these little cues, you know? And it's yeah. funny is like, um, Ashley will text me too and she's like, hey, I felt that tendon today when I went to the bathroom. Yeah, like there's like yeah, this little yeah. thing like right here on her on her hip and they're like, that then tendon you know will ready? show. Yeah, and she's like, hey, I think I'm ready because I have this and she'll like, she knows she's getting ready when that like tendon yeah. like shows. I think the last part maybe to show. Yeah. There was yeah. a bodybuilder I knew too, like an Olympia bodybuilder. He told me like, if my like upper serratus shows on my left side, I know I'm ready. Oh, like, wow. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, so they have like one body part they look at. <laughs> I'd never really done it like that, I think, but it's like, he's like, my coach always knows if that's in, then I'm in. Yeah, you know? that's cool. It's like the last thing to come in type of yeah. thing, you know? And that's what like the body fat thing is too. People don't understand. It's like, um, and this is actually something I stole from Ashley too, was the, if you think of like losing body fat, it's, it's, uh, like you're draining a pool, like the, the, the water at the deep end of the pool is gonna be the last to drain. And so when you're lean and you have like a trouble area, that's gonna be the last to leave. And then that's when you know the pool's empty, right? And so- Yeah, like even like some girls, it's like, they, they drop weight so fast at the end, like the last three pounds is like, oh my God, they gotta yeah. work three times harder to drop the last three pounds of body fat. It gets harder towards the end. And people don't understand that. Like the first, like it's, it's significantly harder for a girl to go from, let's say 15% to 12% than it is from that same girl to go from 20 to 15. Like yeah. significantly harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, the first initial. It's like, someone, it's like someone who's obese, right? They lose like 20 pounds. Like, wow. But it's like, try to lose 20 pounds at the end of your fat loss yeah, journey. It's exactly. much, it's not the same thing. Way harder, yeah. It, it, it's not, yeah, like, um, the, like, it's not going to be like a linear uh, progression the entire time. It's impossible. No, for sure. Um, okay, yeah, switch questions. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a good question. That is funny. <laughs> that's a whole one right there. That's we a whole. That's we one can, video. We can, do that, we can do that as like a short, like on an IG or something. <laughs> All right. So um, this is a pretty good one. Um, the number one thing. Well, we kind of did this one already, but the number one thing to have a successful reverse diet. So what's a, it's a number I kind of went over it the last time too. Yeah, I, I would say, the, just to make this one quick, the number one thing to have a successful reverse diet, honestly, is, is purely discipline. That's it, I would, I would a say. A lot of people say it's actually harder than actually dieting for the show. Because yeah. you're done, like, when you kind of have a, like a show and you like, you have like a deadline and a goal, and like, it's kind of like, okay, I have two weeks out, I gotta follow it, but it's like reverse diet is kind of like, I've done this show, I should be able to, like you kind of like, let's say, especially you win, you're like, you know, I did good, I can like have a cookie here and there, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's kind of like hard to justify yourself while you should be dieting still. Yeah, it's, you know, having a time-based deadline is such a, like for some people is like the, the way that they can stay dedicated. It's like their, um, their accountability is that time-based deadline, you know? And if you can get past that mindset of, I'm only gonna be sticking to my diet because I have a show coming up, and like if you can get past that mindset if you're always eating healthy because you wanna- It's a lifestyle. Yeah, then it's, then it's, that's the number one key. I feel like Olympians thing. have a lot less problem with yeah. this type of thing. And it's, that's the same thing at any sport. You know, you look at like any top level sport, the guys are practicing in the off season, they're practicing, they're staying lean in the off season. I think the, the, like, the only like top athlete I ever heard of that would show up to like camp not in shape was like Shaq, and he like gained like 40 pounds. Yeah, they also made fun of him for it all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, he was like the only one. And, it, and that's the thing about Shaq is he was so talented, right? And that's the thing, that it won't work in our sport that way. You know, like, it's all aesthetics. Yeah, it's not exactly. performance, it's just how you, they don't care if you bench press this or squat this, it's just all aesthetics. There was a, you know, we both like Patrick Bid David, and Patrick Bid David did this thing about Shaq, and he was like, you know. Um, I actually saw that. Did you, and it's yeah, a cool one, right? Because yeah. he said, he basically is saying that like, how Shaq was one of the best athletes, you know, best athletes, but he wasn't like, he, he could have been so much better. I, he's like, you know? he could have been so much better if he had the same discipline. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like how good could he have been? He could have been like the best of all time. This kind of goes to like, I know you get like some athletes sometime where they have like Olympia winning genetics, oh, but yeah. like their mind doesn't connect with their body and they don't have the dedication. That's so like, frustrating. that is the worst. That's like, that is the worst thing ever. It happens a lot with guys too. Like yeah. you see like, you can be on the Olympia stage and they never even become a professional because they cheat on their diet or like make excuses or they don't check in and it's like, dude, you don't even, and then you have people with like terrible genetics they are like working like a dog, like all day Shit. long and focus on like, dude, Isn't you don't suck? know the gift that you have. It sucks. It's, I, I hate that. I, I hate have that. a few of them, man. I've had, a, I've had a few over the years and they're just I like, hate that. Yeah, there was this one girl and I was like, I was like, I either want you to get first at, at nationals or like 
11th. I was always like, get first or 11th, like when we're going into it, because she was like so genetically gifted. And we were pretty early in, uh, like we were on our like maybe a year and a half in or a year and a half in. I was like, you know, her getting a pro card was very realistic, but I was like, she needs to win it because she's not like that into it, you know? She's like kind she's of just like, she's trying, like She's kind of like great and she's like, oh, I'm kind of just going to yeah, roll it. Yeah, she won every show we did locally. It was like no big deal for her, you know? She stuck to her diet. She was good about it. But it was like, you know, you could just see it. And then um, she was like, I just want to get top 10 at the at the at nationals. I just want to get top 10. That's the worst thing I have good genetics. Like, you had to go to the Olympia. What do you yeah. think about top 10? I was like, just, I was like, please win it or don't get top 10. Like, because I know if you get top 10, you're not going to compete anymore. Because you're going to be like satisfied <laughs> with that. She got 10th place and never competed again. Oh, I was like, my God. I was like, see, I was like, can we please do another one? She's like, I'm just really happy. I was like, oh, my hey, God. if you're happy, I can't really say anything. But man, I could have, we could have gotten to the Olympia. I had this sure. guy once, um, like in 2019. This guy, like, 100% natural, like he was like very religious too, so like he didn't want to take nothing. He's like, I'm, I swear to God, this guy could have been a class physique on the Olympia stage, like 100%, 100%. He didn't win the overall at a regional show. A natural, he won, like, he came like first, but it's like, just because like, he just didn't like, for example, like he did like legs the morning of the show, like just like things like oh, that, yeah, just like, yeah. just completely, you're like, what did you do? He's like, yeah. oh, I felt like I was a little bit flat. I did legs the morning of the show, and it's like more water. Yeah. And I'm just like, Dude, it's, like, but like a hundred things like that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it adds but like up. the best thing is when you get like an amateur. Like, I love like coaching beginner amateurs and like making them like great. But it's like you get an amateur with great genetics and they follow everything and they're smart and they check in all the time and they like ask good questions. It's like, man, you're like a little diamond. Like, it's like, yeah. I love that. I'm sure you love that too. No, yeah, it's the best thing. Yeah, I had a guy who was like that. It took so long to get a pro card. He could have got pro card years earlier because he just like didn't believe in himself enough, you know. And it like it was crazy. Even Phil Heath, we were working at Armbrust, and Phil Heath came up and talked to both of us. And he was like, like out of nowhere, he like stopped his workout, came up, taught, saw this That's kid. That's crazy. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, hey, what uh, what show are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm just gonna do the Colorado Colorado Cup, and then um, next year I'll do do USA's. And then like Phil was like, it was actually really cool that Phil did that. And he was like, what? But why? Why are you doing these local shows? And he's like, you know, I'm just trying to get get up there. He's like, but when is gonna be enough for you? Like, when is gonna be enough for you to like take the leap? Like, when do you like when you're good enough to win the Olympia? Now it's you're good enough to finally do USA's. He's like, you gotta get there, man. You gotta get there. Like, go challenge yourself. He's like, what are you doing beating up all these kids locally for? He's yeah. like, go go challenge yourself. And the guy like, I was like, dude, that's Phil. He, a lot of people like, are scared to kind of like take a risk and go like I'm in a big national show. Yeah. Like, I'm like, dude, like you're up there. You're ready to go. Yeah. So we yeah we ended up getting it was the next year finally went to. We finally went to um, to a national show. He won it, perfect score, you know. Of course, the guy looked awesome, and um, still isn't at, on a on a pro stage yet. It's been three years, and I'm like, dude, you're good enough to get to the Olympia like this year, it's like frustrating. the first year. Yeah, and it's like there's so many sides of it. You, you know, ever you meet like, like someone who's like super lazy and like super, but like super smart, like way too smart for their own good, but <laughs> but they just don't use it for anything. They just kind of hang out all day at yeah, home. They're yeah, like, yeah, exactly. but it's like you're a genius. You can like change the world like what are you doing yeah you see yeah. those too you know it's funny but it's the same type of thing that's the, that's the frustration we run into with like being coaches it's so funny because yeah. we see it because we, we work with so many people that you can see when someone's a like genetic a freak. genetic freak yeah. yeah and then you're just like man if you just gave a little bit better if you just had good off seasons you could be top five at the olympic you just had and you know, whatever. some people don't understand their potential either like Teresa miller we're just talking about like my my new athlete like she's been coaching herself for like three years like never came better than call at a show i'm like you can be the next giant land. Like, do you understand this? Like, you can win the Olympia. Oh yeah, you're beautiful. You're you're nice. Your genetics are crazy. But she's like, she didn't like. She's like, I'm like, you win a pro show. She's like, really? I'm like, are you serious right now? Oh, like, she'll easily win a pro show. I know, like her first pro show probably. It's and funny I, is that is that um, also there was a I was talking to another coach at one of the pro shows she was at, and he's like, well, who's here? And I was like, oh, she's here, she's here, she's here. And I was like, and then Teresa's here. And then the coach was like, he's like, yeah, but she's she's not going to show up in shape. She never shows. Yeah, I know. He's like, know. she's always she's always her worst enemy. She just shows up in shape once. She'll win everything. Yeah, exactly. But I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm like, why doesn't she come in? Because yeah, you, know? you coach yourself. You don't like if you don't believe in yourself, and you're like, well, why am I going to starve to go to bed? And like, what? Like, she she sent me a message like three days ago, and she's like, I'm really hungry. She's up at two o'clock in the morning. She messaged me, and I was like, why are you messaging me? Why are you, you see me? She's like, I'm really hungry. It's hard to sleep. And I'm like, this is exactly what you need to coach. Because if you were, if you didn't have no one to be accountable to, you would have ate something and go to bed. Yeah. Like if you ha you know you have a check-in tomorrow, you're gonna go to bed hungry, and that's like the type of like that's what you need to get that last bit of body fat off. Yeah. But if you're kind of like just doing your check-ins yourself, you're like I, uh, I can have a little bit of rice before bed and sleep better. Yeah. You know. No, so. for sure, I agree with that 100. percent And I, I'm, I'm actually excited to see that one. Yeah. I was like, I was like, damn, James got her because that girl, that's gonna be an easy one. <laughs> I was like, I was so happy I made a video review because she told me that every coach tried to like get her on her team, and then she like. 
messaged me and she's like, hey, can I join your team? I'm like, wow, that's great. I was like, yeah. that's really happy. But I, I kind of like made a video review on her. Like, this is like the next one in Coleman Bikini if she just gets it together. Yeah, she's got I the look, like, the yeah. shape, the structure, you know, and it's just, it's just getting her in And shape. smart too, she trains people too, like, so she knows what she's doing. Like, yeah. it's not like she's like, kind of like new, like she's been training a long time. Yeah, too. that's going to be an interesting one next year when she's in shape. I, I, I think she's competing in like nine weeks. Oh, really? Yeah, she's yeah. going to, I think within three shows she wins a show, if not the first yeah. one. So, okay. good question. Um, Someone's, when do you prescribe hit cardio? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so there's a, here's the thing about hit cardio. I like doing hit cardio because I can get the same result of calories burned in lesser amount of time, and that's pretty much the main reason for it. And then there's the afterburn of the hit cardio, so you can get, but the afterburn is definitely like oversold on people. So people are like don't understand what the afterburn yeah, it's like is. Like thousands of calories a day. Yeah, it's like so you talk about like. Do you make your clients do hit cardio every day though, or no? Um, Isn't it kind of hard on your nervous system, like if you do that every day? Yeah, so I won't do it every day on that. So kind of like we kind of trend down towards the towards as we get closer to the show, and then switch to like steady state towards the end. But some people we just do steady state the whole time too, and some people I don't even do any cardio, just do steps. You know, it just yeah. depends on the. I think it just person. depends on the individual. Like yeah. some people, like like you're not gonna th you're not gonna see three hundred pound bodybuilders do hit cardio. Yeah. They're not because they, it's too hard. Like yeah. they don't, they'd rather stay on the treadmill for two hours and do like three minutes of hit cardio, and like. They're huge and they get the leanness. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I feel like it's just like what the athlete prefers. Yeah, like, well, they're, they're burning so many calories because they are so big already. Yeah, you know? exactly. So like so. when you have, here's here's like, there's so many scenarios. It's, it's, this is a very like multi-layered question because if you have someone that has no glutes and small legs, like giving them long distance endurance-based cardio is going to be terrible for them. Yeah, because if, yeah. if you see like a marathon runner, they're all skinny legs. If you see, see a cyclist or a sprinter, they have huge legs. Yeah, exactly. So, so that, someone yeah. who's got... It's easier to keep muscle on, yeah. Yeah, right, someone who's got skinny legs, I'm trying to minimize how much endurance-based cardio they're doing. And, um, and someone that has like glutes are flattening out or have no glutes, well, then I'm going to try to give them as much hit as possible, right? But, well, it's hit for their cardio as much as possible, like low cardio still. And... But the problem is, is that if you do too much hit, well, then that starts affecting your leg workout. So that same person, yeah, they're not recovering. Yeah, right. that same person, you're trying to keep their, you're trying to keep muscle on them and keep them from doing endurance cardio. Well, now they're having crappy leg workouts. So what's worse, right? So then you have to weigh that out. Mm -hmm. And then you have, um, and so, so it's if like, they're a nat natural athlete too, like they're not recovering as fast too, and it's like they're not going to really be able to gain muscle while they're losing fat at the same time. So it's like there's a lot of like variables where you're like, damn. Like, yeah. And so you're chasing this, like there's this thing called EPOC, which is um, excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, which is the afterburn of cardio from doing like hit sessions. But you also get that from doing weightlifting too. Each, if you're doing your weightlifting hard, like on a leg day, that's kind of a mini hit as well. It's not like a full hit, but it's like a mini hit, right? You're lifting, you're getting your heart rate up real quick, and then you take a rest period. You get your heart rate up real quick, you take a rest period. So it's kind of like a mini hit. So you're already getting some of that from your workout. So it kind of comes down to like what the athlete's performance capabilities are. You know, if you get an Ashley Kaltwasser or something, she could do hit all day. It's not going to affect her. She does she's been athlete forever though. Yeah, so yeah it's, like, it's not going to wear her out. She's, I mean, she's, the, the, the girl's made out of steel. She's got a. You have some athletes that just like to do cardio. Like I had some like yeah. ectomorphs. Like, can I just do, please just do 30 minutes of cardio a day? I'm like, Jesus. Like, yeah. like I, no, I want you to sleep because yeah. you're like burning so many calories. I don't want you to burn more. I have this guy, um, this, this guy who's, uh, um, he, he's, a business owner, he's like, he's got like five. Oh yeah, employees. you told me about yeah, this yeah. Thing. He does, and he's like, I want him to do less cardio, but he's like, he's like, just for my own, just for my own, like, sanity, people I like do cardio. Thirty minutes. Cardio, Those are weird people. Six right? days a week. I know, That's like, weird. Why do you want to do cardio? I'm like, and he's ripped, and he's like sixty years old. He's jacked and ripped. That's a boss, though. Dude, he's a super boss. He, <laughs> he's a funny super is, boss. He makes me. He, he makes. I'll tell you who he is. You know who he is. He makes me feel like. Inadequate. Like, yeah, You're like, yeah, I could do so, so much more in my sometimes life. Sometimes I'm like, God, I'm a piece of shit, dude. This guy, this guy's like, oh, this huge company. He's got 500 employees. He's got kids, a wife. Uh, I love the way I, that. I know he works more harder than like at least as hard as me. Like not, you know, if not harder with his job. And he's got abs year round. And he's doing cardio every day. And That's I'm a like, boss. Like I'm like, dude, fully I like could be taking doing more. of life. Yeah, yeah his check-ins make me like, I, I love seeing him because it's so awesome. But at the same time, I'm like, it's a, it is. I'm like. Fuck, I should be doing it. Yeah, but those are people that motivate you to be a yeah, better entrepreneur exactly. too. It's like, you have two type of people. You have people who like, you're just like me, like you see people that are doing better than you and like work harder than you and that motivates you to like do more yeah. and you feel inadequate. But then you have people who are like kind of lazier and don't do anything and they like hate the people that are doing better than exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, that's like, that's, yeah, exactly. It's a difference of mindset, right? Yeah, like, exactly. For me, I don't hate on him. I want to, I should be more like Exactly, it. like a lot of yeah. people that like have a lot of success, they're not going to hate on people who are doing better than them. They see them like, you're more happy for them because you've already accomplished a lot too and you want to just like, like, wow, like you can, I can really do more with my time. Yeah, there's a few of them out there. Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, um, just the only one I can like physically be in contact with was, was with him. He's a very good, like uh, someone to like admire to be like, you know, but Joe Rogan, I see what he does and I'm like, dude, 
I do one to two podcasts a week and it drains me mentally. Like it's hard. Like even when like I'm going somewhere or actually taking a nap after you, dude, it's they're mentally draining. Right. Yeah. So like, uh, she'll be like, let's get two in. And I'm like, I just want to be good on the mic. And I don't, I'm not that good if I do two. And I'm like, dude, Joe Rogan's doing two a day. And they're like three hours long. And it's long. like mentally draining. It's like, hard. It, like, and he's like, has to get into all these like topics of like yeah. freaking uh, biochemistry and viruses and talk to like, dude, I, I don't know how he goes from topic to topic of like, compl- like monkeys to like MMA to like freaking yeah. solar system. It's like, Jesus. It's crazy. And it just shows you like, and then he works out and then he does uh, commentating and then he does comedy. Like, but he has like no night. envy against anyone. Like, oh, even no. like a Patrick, but dude, no envy. And like, that's what I was like, when I first started coaching, it's so funny, um, I was like kind of like new, whatever, and I saw this like coach in, in Canada, and he had like a huge like seminar of all his coaches, and he's giving awards out, and he had a suit and a tie on, he had pro cards, I was like, man, I want to be like this guy so bad. And yeah. I was like, I was like always looking up to him, like try to talk to him, and like try to be his friend, and like, I told my ex-girlfriend at the time, I was like, man, I want to be like this guy. She's like, oh, come on, that's like a lot. Like, that's yeah. it. And now I'm like, so like above that as far as like making <laughs> pros, and like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we're still friends and stuff too, and he's like, he doesn't, um, he doesn't like, talk to me like a way of like he's like you know nbs2 we kind of just like talk and like we kind of yeah. like you know it's just the way it is because it's like you got to surround yourself with people with, you got to surround yourself with people you got to surround yourself with people that are also doing better than you too yeah and i'm saying because like those people are going to bring you up i think so too and yeah. it's funny because like you know i started this at a young age too and like when i was younger i was like super aggressive super aggressive and it was like me versus the world and trying to build this business and all this stuff and like yeah but that's know. like a young ego type of mentality yeah. too and then as i got as i got older i was like i just now i'm friends with like all the top coaches and i don't even yeah. care you know yeah, nothing else to prove Let's, yeah you know what, what is there you know and it's like and then the cool thing is you got to learn from them too you know yeah I, like no, me and you at dinner yesterday we're like talking about like investing and like I, and I taught you some stuff you taught me some stuff like we just like learn off each other we bounce ideas and we're like you know yeah it makes and i realize fun. we're like very similar we have like yeah, the same mentality it's, it's, it's funny because i was like I told you already, I'll tell everyone else, but like when you first came on the scene, I didn't really know what to think of you. I was like, I don't know this guy. But then as we started like coming like more and more talking more, I was like, dude, I was exactly like him when I was his age, like just like a few years ago, because yeah. I'm like 10 years older than you. I'm like, dude, he's like exactly like me. He was just, you're farther than I was at your age. But I was like, I was like, I was like that, like a hundred percent. It's just funny to see. Yeah, it's just kind of like, like uh, yeah. <laughs> just, I was like a lot, like even when I started, like I was kind of more like aggressive and stuff too. And like, um, I don't know, just kind of like, the more you grow to and you like learn how to do things like better, you kind of just like your personality changes a little bit too. Yeah. Like you realize too, like we realize that we're like, we're very similar. Yeah. I'm a little bit more, you know, I don't want to use the word mean. <laughs> but like we, like me and you like get along, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. so well, like I hang out with you like all day long. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's funny. It's, it's actually really cool. You know what it is? I feel like really good entrepreneurs kind of like just like hanging out with each other. Cause like there's, and there's nothing like more in this world than young entrepreneurs. I swear. Like if I see like, <laughs> if I see like a 20 year old girl, like starting a business, I'm like, man, you're a fucking boss. Like good for you yeah. for taking the reins of your like business in your life. Like I love that. Yeah, me too. The it's whole good, world it's, runs off entpreneurs. Oh like, yeah. That's uh, everyone's, everyone's goods. Everything this, that's us doing this podcast. That's what was the question that questions. we're supposed to answer? It was like, uh, <laughs> what, what was, was the it, question? It was about, uh, it was about, it's funny. This is about success. Hit, hit cardio. No, it was about oh, hit hit cardio. Hit cardio. Yeah. We're talking about entrepreneurship. Yeah, that, no, the, that's uh, it. You know what's funny is my entrepreneurship really came because of an accident. It wasn't really anything. It just kind of just dealt with the success of putting out good athletes, you know? And it's like... Did you, this, was this the only business you ever did or what? Um, I flipped houses and stuff too for a while. Um, so I did that. I think that's kind of where we all start too. Yeah, I flipped some <laughs> yeah. houses. I've actually... You know what? Even now, like I'll still... Like la- if you look at like last year's like real estate, like I probably made more in real estate than I did here. And it wasn't even intentional. It was just because I have properties and stuff. Yeah, plus inflation like, and stuff. Also, yeah, just yeah. Infl- inflation was crazy last year. You know what I mean? So the, this is like, you know, it's not, I don't even really look at it as like entrepreneurship for me. It's like, I want to keep it all running and I want to make sure that my coaches are all making a good income. And But for me, it's like, I just want to put out, a, I want to make sure that everyone's happy. Every client's happy. They feel like they got their money's worth. And I want to make sure that they that the the quality of our prep never goes down. We never water it down. I just yeah. You don't want to have like thirty coaches and then three thousand athletes and just like okay, and what's like, the point? I mean, you see that. You know, you see like. But also, 3, we're talking about athletes. this yesterday. There's only like there's only a point in your life where you have like a certain amount of income where you're like, what do I spend money on? Yeah. It's like, and the second you start, like, I, I, so when I started to, I was an entrepreneur since I was 16 years old. I only, I online a services company. And then I went into like investing in real estate. And then I went into like personal training. So I've always like, been an entrepreneur since I was like 16 years old. I went to like college and stuff too. And I was like, man, the f- starting salary is like 40 K a year. Yeah. I'm like 17 years old. I'm like, I'm making much more than this already. <laughs> so it's like, why would I even pursue like my education? But, um, as far as like, uh, sorry, I kind of like went out, went off a little bit, but, um, Whoa, let's try. Um, we were talking about just like, well, the entrepreneurship and like uh, making a certain amount of money. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like, so it's, I'm, I ruined my first business because I got so big that I didn't have a passion anymore for what I was doing. Yeah. 
And it's like, and then I just kind of like, I, I sold it and I was like, you know what, I don't, I, I don't like it anymore. And I feel like this too, like if I get too big and I stop caring about the quality and stop caring about winning and just do it for like monetary, you know, uh, gain, you lose the passion and then oh, you yeah. just don't care anymore. And it's like, it's like some, like, I don't never coach like 2000 athletes. Like I have like a waiting list because I don't want to dilute my, my business. Cause I know it's not even about like the quality. Of, it's just like, I'm not going to like it anymore. And the second you don't like it anymore, yeah. you stop becoming good at it. Cause it's you just also, don't care. You yeah, gotta care. And it's also self-preservation too. Like if you start doing that, then your work goes down and then you actually go out of business. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Cause people, yeah. Seen we, we've that. seen teams like that oh, all the yeah, time. So it's I've like, seen it happen you have so, so many, many athletes times. and then they're like, well, oh, where'd they go? And it's just because people realize it's like, like, like if half your athletes don't look good, there's yeah, a, there's a I'm reason. Like, oh wait, you had thirty people at USA's and no pro cards or something yeah, like that. You're gonna be like, what sense. what happened? Like, are you got you know? It's like it doesn't make any sense. Like, like you'll have a big and you'll you have a big it. amount of like income going into initially, and like there's a lot of teams that, like grow so fast and like you have like a million athletes and you're like it looks cool, but then at the end of the day you're like, man, like the quality's not there. And and it's like we we're talking about how important marketing is like for coaching or just marketing for any business. Like. Um, I'm building another business on the side, like it's in the cosmetic industry, and it's like I know. I didn't know it's, that. That's what? cool. You didn't know that? Cosmetic too. That's yeah, cool. yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna go away from coaching right now, but I just like, I'm, I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so I always need to be busy. I'm like, yeah. I'm sure a little bit like, Asperger's or something. I don't know. Yeah. I'm always like on the go. Like I can't like stop. So my mind was, I always have to be challenged, and I know one day if I ever win the Bikini Olympia, not that I'll stop coaching, but I'm not gonna like I already. Then you already accomplished everything you have to do. What else can yeah. you make a million pros? Okay, it's like you know the first. The best feeling is make, winning your first pro card. Yeah. And then it like significantly goes down. I've had like, I made five pros at a show once. I'm like, it's cool, but I the first pro card was much better. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know after, if I win the Bikini Olympia one day, I'm just kind of like, not, not that I'm not gonna care, but I'm kind of like, I'm gonna need more challenges. So now I'm building actually a, a cosmetic line with uh, my girlfriend, Hannah. And that's like skincare and hair care and stuff too. And I'm that's like, cool. yeah. And I, I have like big goals for my, um, you know, before I'm 40, I have big goals that I want to accomplish. And like, I, I need a, something that I can, scale massively like a retail product because there's only i coach every single athlete that i on my team you know that too yeah. we have like posing coach but i we have a kind of like a different business approach too but you have quality control too yeah but i personally for me i coach every athlete on my team it's always how i want to do it i'll never have uh, multiple coaches but like so there's only so much of me that can go around you know yeah. what i'm saying and i know if i want to scale to reach my goals i need something that i can sell in it you know to like we have such a niche market here. And yeah. so I need to be able to expand like and scale crazy. So that's what I've been working on recently. I've been working on it with Hannah now for nine months. And that's cool, man. Yeah, I mean, we have like we have like 16 products to launch right away. Yeah, Dang, so. yeah. That's cool. It's a creative mind. Yeah, but it's cool because it's like, I'm learning stuff that I don't know about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like before when I started coaching, like I was 320 pounds. Like for my other business, I was like, so obese because like I was on the computer 18 hours a day with my freaking online service company and like then I lost 140 pounds. It's like if you saw me like then, you would never think I'd be coaching the best bikini, bikini athletes in the world. It's like completely contradictory yeah, yeah. to like my lifestyle before this. And then, then I lost the weight and I got into the gym and I started personal training and I got computers. So it's like I like to bounce like completely like all over the place and just learn new things. It's That's cool. Funny. That's the same. It's, it's, the same a, it's challenging because if you always do yeah. things that you're comfortable with, you're never going to grow as a person. Yeah. There's, um, there's a. So this, this changed from to an inspirational podcast instead of a question and answering podcast. Yeah, right. It is. <laughs> well, there's this thing from Jung. He's a, he's a philosopher. Who? Jung. Mm -hmm. um, he's a philosopher in, I think, Sweden. And he's like really, really famous. And he talks about, um, he talks about the, you know, you have to, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's something like, <coughs> like basically, it's like, um, it's like stupidity breeds greatness, you know, because he's basically <coughs> saying that you have to go into something com with the, you know nothing about in order to grow, and so you have to be willing to be <coughs> kind of dumb at something. Like you know, you someone come into their first posing class, and I always tell everyone when they come into first posing class, I'm like, look, it's okay that you suck because everyone sucked at one time at posing. It's okay. Some people just naturally have it though better, but yeah, yeah no one's like perfect to start. Yeah, yeah. and I always say, hey, it's, <coughs> so it's it's the. It's the willingness to go through and kind of feel that awkward stupidity, that awkward, I don't know anything about this, what am I doing, I'm in too deep, I'm in too deep, that causes people to grow to their... To their if you're uncomfortable, yeah. like some people some people tread water when they're in too deep and some people sink. Yeah. It's like, you, like, but good entrepreneurs are good problem solvers and you're, I don't know what to do, but I thrive under chaos and I thrive yeah. under stress. Like, when I'm stressed, I'm like, that's my, that's where I'm like, I thrive and I'm like, I can problem solve and like stuff too and it's just like, when I'm like comfortable, I'm like, fuck, man, I gotta get myself into some trouble. <laughs> no, <laughs> you gotta, you're good. <laughs> no, but not, not, <laughs> yeah, no, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. like, man, I gotta like, I gotta like challenge myself in like yeah. some way too. And like, um, yeah, my girlfriend knows that too. She's like, man, you're always fucking like, like you're always like trying to like do something to like keep your mind like busy and stuff too. And they say that's a difference of like an entrepreneur and an entrepreneur, you know, like an entrepreneur is are you, like- Are you taking that from Patrick with David? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. say like the, the entrepreneur is like the creative Explain mind. Explain what an entrepreneur and, though is. Yeah, so um, for example, like this, 
what we do, we have, so I'm the, I'm the, so I'm a, what they call an accidental entrepreneur. I wasn't like really ever wanting to be, have this have the way it is. Does anyone become like a, like a plant entrepreneur though? I don't know. It's a good question, yeah. right? It's kind of like how most kids are accidents, right? So <laughs> it's like, who's really planning that, right? It's like, like two people. So it's like the, so it's, it's, uh, so accidental entrepreneurs is like, I, my goal was always to put out the best physique. And that's what a lot of coaches will come up to me. Like, how did you do it? How did you get to where you're at? I'm like, well, one, I've been doing this since I was, I worked in supplements since I was 16 years old, you know? And so, um, two, I was a trainer since I was 18. But really, I was like, look, I won excessively. That's what I did. I, every show I went to, and every show I still go to, I want to win, and I want it to, like, because... The way I compete, and we were talking about it before, is like I want to beat James at every single show I can. And it like so rude. You never told me that. <laughs> and whatever, like whatever, another coach like beats me with his athletes, and I'm like, dang it! Like actually, last weekend, yeah, it's uh, like a battle of the brains. Is exactly, saying. yeah, battle of the brains. You know, and like last weekend, I was with uh, I was at a muscle contest show, and Kim was there, and I had we were. Did both, you have, was it a pro show or not? Oh, no, it was, an, it was a local show. But even then, I get so like into it, yeah, you know, yeah. like it, it gets to me. I want to. I was like, I went into that show saying, hey, we have enough talent here, we could win every divisions overall. I was like, we had figure, we had women's physique, we had all these things, and I was like, we could win every division and win all the women's divisions here today. Can I blow my nose one second? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you can freeze it. <laughs> and so with, um, with that weekend, we won, you know, we won all the master's divisions in bikini. We won a lot of the divisions in bikini, um, but we didn't win the overall. And then we won women's physique. Um, we won you wellness. Women's physique? Yeah, we won women's physique. We won wellness overall. Well, oh yeah, I saw you like your master's girl like won wellness too overall. That yeah, guy was yeah. crazy. Yeah. And so, um, well, we don't. Co uh, so that's the thing is we have different coaches that have like specialties and stuff, and I oversee everything. And um, so Sam coaches the women's physique because she's a uh, okay, competitor yeah. too. So, um, but the we didn't win bikini, but. And then the girl got off stage and I was like, and Kim was right next to me. I'm like, damn it, Kim, was that you? He's like, yep. <laughs> I was like, Dude. damn it, Kim. <laughs> so it's, like, it's, it's like me and Shane Hughley. Every single US, every single natural show in the States I'm with him. And he like, he beats me at one like pro card. I'd be him. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. so funny. It's like, a, yeah. it's like a, so if you don't care about winning, like I don't think you could be, you know, you can get yeah. to that level. So my like, my entrepreneurship wasn't really about anything besides me just trying to win, you know, and that's yeah, really all comp com Yeah, got to be competitive. These are the fruits of the, the, to the victor goes the spoils, right? So it was like, that's really what happened. And just kind of, we just keep winning, you know? So it was like, that's, and that's the thing. That's the pressure about doing something like this is you're, there's a lot of pressure on you to consistently win. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you know, you got to be able to deal with that pressure every single weekend at every single pro But also, I'm sure you've had like some times where it's like, you like make so many pro cards one show, you like, and then like the next show you like, you do shit. And I'm like, oh, yeah. it probably, it's like, it's not often, but you're like, fuck man. But that, that keeps you like kind of humbled yeah. and you realize you don't know everything. Like I like that too. Like yeah. I like in Canada, like I win like every bikini pro card. And it's like, it's boring because I kind of like boost my ego a little bit. Yeah. And then like I come to the States a little bit and like, fuck, I'll like, I have like a bad show and I'm like, man, like what did I do wrong? But you know what's, you probably the same to me is like, you learn after every win and every loss. Oh, like every, way, like, way more. like I'm sure you learn like life changing things and like coaching from like one athlete sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my God, like this athlete like taught me something. Just like, the athlete didn't even say anything. Just like from their body, you yeah. like realize things. My biggest failures <clears throat> is my biggest learning. Like, yeah, always, 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 always. Yeah. You know, if, you're, if all you do is win and you just start thinking you're the best, you know, that's, yeah. that's what, and that was what needs, a reason I need to But no one in this industry really wins all the time. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think there's like any top coach that thinks that they, that there's nothing, there's always something once, you can learn. Once they start climbing, they realize they don't know anything. You know? Yeah, yeah, so exactly. Like, when, as I started climbing, I'm like, dude, I have so much more to go. Yeah. But like, you're always uh, learning. I mean, this, oh, I totally. learn, don't you learn every show? Oh, dude. Every single show. Like, it's really rare when I don't. You know, when yeah. I was in, and that was another reason I need to move from Colorado, because I was in Colorado and we literally won. Like, I don't think there's a record left there. Like, it's just. That's the problem. That's what you know? you're the same as me. If you get too comfortable, you kind of like fade away and you're like, you don't, you don't care anymore. Yeah. And the second you stop learning, you stop like being passionate about something, you just kind of like, you, you regress because there's always younger people, there's always hungrier people that are coming up and they're learning. Yeah. And then you get surpassed. That's what happens a lot exactly, of Exactly, yeah. It's, it's hard to stay on top of that hill. The, um, the, yeah, in Colorado, we had like, we have 36 team championships and it's like they had to stop doing the team championship out there because we just had. Dude, they did the same thing for me. And, really? Uh, yeah, correct. It was, I was actually annoyed because I, I still liked winning them. Yeah, but it's, like, it's good for business too. Like, it helped my business a lot when you're like the top coach of uh, whatever. And like they stopped doing it because it was like, oh my dude. Like. Yeah, because like people were complaining. I'm like, dude, it's just so weak that you would complain about someone winning too much. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, do better. Like, do better. Yeah. You know, it's just so weak. But yeah, it was just, over there, it just wasn't challenging enough. We'd win like everything. I think there was one year, there was like 10 shows there, and we won seven bikini overalls in one year. Yeah, yeah. And it was like, in that same year, we won like six minutes. It's so funny. I was like, dude, this is so easy. You know? Yeah. So it's like, now we go to like the, the, the US stage, and it's yeah, way Yeah, it's a lot tougher than Yeah, you don't, you don't win like that. And no one wins. No, like no, that. no, no, yeah, no. It's, like, like, it's crazy. I think like I, I was like super happy last year. Like North Americans, I had like two girls in the overall. I was like, this nice. is fucking that's, dope. That's hard to do. That's very tough because like four girls per class. But like I won like the um, 
I won every Masters Pro. That was like, I think one of my best shows ever. Oh, I had yeah. six girls, five went pro. Nice. That, that was like, it's, it was, that was like my, yeah, you and then the next week I had like a shit show. You might not ever top that. That's a, I that's don't know. a pretty, yeah, yeah. I've had four in a day. I've had four yeah. in a day. But like uh, five, like five out of six is crazy. And then I won like all the Masters Bikini Pro, like the, the 35, 45, like overalls. Yeah. And then in the pro. And then I was like, oh, this is a good show. Yeah. But it's like, but that was like, that was a like great feeling because I was like, wow, this is a good accomplishment. But then like in Canada, like I've had pro qualifiers where seven out of eight of the girls are my girls in the overall. Dang, yeah, nice. yeah, but it's cool, but it's like, it's like it sucks. Like yeah. I, I don't care about that anymore. I had one lineup in Colorado where it was like six classes and they're all ours. I yeah. was like, we're going to do overalls today. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say that in, the, in your last show oh, too? Was the two had, Masters girls? Yeah, we had the two Masters overalls last so week. Funny. It was like our team versus our team. It's funny because I was sitting I'm with trying, Ash. I'm trying to like look other questions where you Yeah, I was, I was talking to, uh, I was sitting next to Ashley and then I was like, I'm like, so Ashley, in this situation, we don't cheer for anyone. Because <laughs> someone's going to get mad. So just, when someone wins, just be quiet and just clap. Just, that's pretty funny. Because there's both of our girls. Someone says, what is the best macro, macro split for someone starting out? Oh, that's impossible. Yeah. But I would say, like, you definitely need, like, a decent amount of protein. Like, yeah. I would say, like, base would be, like, one gram of protein per pound of body oh, yeah. fat, like a base. Yeah, yeah. I typically go a bit higher than that for my girls. Yeah. I learned, actually, like... In the past two years, I was like, I used to give like about one gram per pound, and then I realized all the Brazilians, all, all the Brazilians, all the Brazilians hey. do like a lot of protein. Like I know, like like in Isa, like I saw she was like two hundred grams of protein on her diet. Wow, like, it might be a little bit much, but I'm like, yo, these Brazilian girls are are hard, they're dense, and they're growing. I'm like, this protein thing is a serious business. Yeah, you know what? I think that that's the thing. Here's here's the, and I like to. I'm glad that you brought that up because people, it's so weird, and it's it's always these like these very like extreme nutrition scientists that want to creep into our world without any like and they, and they tell you everything you do is wrong without any resume of producing anything yeah. you know and they creep into our world and then they're like oh you should do it this way you should do it this way and i'm like really because you don't do anything successful on these stages on these big stages like what are you doing in the wnbf where there's like three guys that show up and you win so there's, what, there's no know? top nutritionist as a coach yeah you know what I mean? and it's like it's so funny because i was like we talked about something last time too like my, my sister was like very obese too and she lost 150 pounds. And before she used me to like diet her down, she went to a nutritionist and she was like, the goal is like to lose one pound a week. And I'm like, dude, it's gonna take you three years to lose this weight. You can't be motivated for three years to lose weight. So the girl was giving her like bagels and milk and orange juice. I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Like, let me just do your diet. And she lost 150 pounds in eight months. And she like kept it off. But it's like, just like so it's like, it's kind of like a healthier approach type of thing. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, what's healthier? Um, being 150 pounds overweight or dieting kind of losing it fast. Yeah, yeah. there's a strong argument there, you know? I and, mean. And the thing is too, is like, <clears throat> that's what that's what happens. And so when these people start like infiltrating our, like our industry, I don't have any problem with the scientists like going in, but have a resume that says, hey, I've done this. I've gotten this many people pro. I've gotten this many pro wins in the IFBB or whatever, right? Like once you do that and you start like starting to do that. Because if you like, you got, I made so many pros and I fire, follow a very scientific approach that's proven, then it's proven. Yeah. But if it's just like, it's kind of like, oh, this is, you're doing this wrong. It's like, it's like when people tell me, oh, why do you have girls on 90 minutes of cardio? Why do you have girls on two hours cardio sometimes? I'm like, I made 28 pros in the last three years. Like, <laughs> what do you talk, like, this is what some of them need to get lean. And if you, if, and it's never like big teams. It's always like people that like, kind of like don't know. And they kind of like, you know what, you know what though? I did this too. Like, I'm not even lying. Like when I was like, I don't mind like being honest. Like when I started coaching five years ago, I kind of like criticized better teams. Like, oh, why do I do this? It's stupid, it's stupid. And it's kind of like, I don't know if it's kind of like your you think you're smarter than them or you do, but then you like, you realize you're like, dude, like they have the results, you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, they're kind of like end up being right. And you're like, hmm, it's true. Cause if these people actually had as many athletes as, as we do, and they try to like be su as su successful as we are with iFree Pro Cards, like they're going to have to push the limit on the athletes a bit of time, and, like yeah, yeah, drop their food sure. a little bit. And they're going to understand like when you start coaching thousands of athletes, you realize that you're, your 15 minutes of cardio a day and your 2,000 calories is not going to work for every athlete. Oh, no, Those are like sure, genetic yeah. freaks. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, yeah, so. And I always say that too, when I'm like, because I, I do have these crazy stories. I have two girls getting ready for a pro show uh, with no cardio right now. And that's like, I always say, hey, they are very much Yes, some team's like, oh my, look at this, no cardio. Yeah. I have a girl too doing 4,000 4, um, calories of food and no cardio too. And she's like yeah. super lean. It's just like, this is a freak. Yeah, it's like. This is not normal. It's like four people on my team. It's yeah. like, that's it. You know, yeah. It's not going to be like a normal thing. It's very You can't rare. market that as that's your whole approach. Oh yeah, because then you're going to be disappointed yeah, anyway. Yeah, so, exactly. But when it comes down to that, this is this is the problem that you run into with like the nutrition scientists that are in, um, that, that come in and like they start getting into like the bodybuilding world. But how many people say, do that though? Well, there there's a lot of like big But they're never names. known though, really? Yeah, there's some big names. I know who you're talking like about, like, like specifically, there's, but there's quite a few of them. Yeah, I would say there's like 
There's like four to five like main ones that are like, you know, that, that have great degrees. They might even be doctors. Um, you know, they're just like master's There's some things too, like, like macronutrients do work. Like it's kind of like a kind of a public. It's like you can give a client a macro diet. I, do you do that or do you have meal plans? Macro diets, no. So yeah, it's kind of, I, some coaches do that, but I feel like it works for athletes that you trust that are going to do like lean proteins and like follow like proper healthy food. Yeah. But let me tell you something: for fat loss, if you're eating a thousand calories a day of protein or a thousand calories a day of rice or whatever, you're you're going to lose fat like the same amount of time. If you're not trying to preserve your muscle mass, like when I. When I lost 140 pounds, I went to breakfast every morning. That was, I ate one meal a day, went to breakfast every morning. I had like a chocolate crepe and some eggs. Really? Every day for a year and a half, yeah. And I lost 140 pounds. Are you serious? Yeah. Like barely, I didn't know this. Yeah, just because it's like, the, it's a calorie deficit regardless. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is like a macro diet, if you're eating chocolate and ice cream and bacon every day, why is you no know pro Olympia bodybuilders that follow a macro diet that yeah. eat, eat ice cream and shit going to the show? Because it's not like, fat loss is different than fat loss with muscle building and muscle growth. It's not, your body's not gonna react the same. Yes, you lose fat the same amount, but we preserve the same amount of muscle and the same amount of, um, you know, recovery stuff too if you're eating bacon as your, your fat and your protein source versus chicken and olive oil. Yeah. Obviously not. I've had a, the, my, my issue with macro dieting was in, um, wasn't so much an efficacy thing of it. It was more so a um, data data tracking, you know? So oh, when, it's when impossible. Have, when you have beginners, yeah. it's like they track on fitness app or they track on this and they don't like know how to calculate it and it's like, oh my they, God. It's the, the, the largest margin so of error of any diet is a macro diet. They've actually yeah. studied it with the diets being underreported by up to 40%, right? So like, how are you as a coach? Because me and you as a coach is right. It's like we're working off of like these micro You can do, yeah, you can do like, like an Olympian that like, if a Jennifer Dory, or sorry, like a Laura Lee, I give her like a macro diet, like, um, you know what, maybe not even Laurely. <laughs> yeah. like, no, but like anyone like you give like a like a macro diet, like you know they're gonna be able to follow and track properly. If you have a beginner who's in the because you take beginners too probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. They come to the gym and you're like, oh like they follow macro diet. Like for example, like I had a girl like I give her a diet with like fifteen hundred calories, she's like, Yeah, but on my fitness app it says uh oh, nineteen uh, nineteen hundred calories. I'm like, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just follow the diet I tell you, the 500 calorie one, and don't worry about this fitness app. Yeah, the fitness app. Like, well, the like, problem is those are user, they're database, like user yeah. database. So like, you can go right now into one of these apps and type in what you put a food in, and then it stays in there. And so you could say, whatever, chicken is 300 calories in this app, even if it's only 150, because you just underreport it or whatever, yeah. or overreport it, and then that person starts using it, and now their calories are all off, right? Yeah. So, and it's like, so it's user-based. So that's the problem with, with some of them, not all of them, but some of them. But the, like, when we're working off of these like micro progressions of like, 10% adjustments, 20% adjustments a week, but then they're under reporting by 20 to 30%. How are you going to track that? You know, so. You, oh, that one's going to work if you have like really top athletes that you trust. You can't do this. We can't do yeah. this on a large scale. If you're work. eating chicken and it, let's say, let's say for example, and that, to the meal plan thing, for example, let's say you are off on your calories on your meal plan. Let's say I listed my meal plan and it says it's 2,000 calories, but in reality, the meal plan is 1,500 calories. And I'm, I messed up for some reason on my meal plan. Right. Well, either way, you're still eating the same foods every week, so it's we still have the data of you eating those foods. So I don't really care what it says. And plus, you cut like if you're using the same system to track your calories, that's all you need. You like you don't like. Let me give you an example, like for cardio machine, right? If you have someone tracking on like an Apple Watch, but like some like everyone's like stairmaster and, and treadmill tracks like different calories, right? So it's like as long as you're consistent with one, like with one unit of measurement, then it's like is it a scale? Like I always mean athletes bring the same scale. It's like as long as you're consistent with one. Thing that's measuring, then it's okay. Exactly. Exactly. Then, that's all that matters. Because if you understand the data that we exactly. Use them, yes, right? exactly. And so and that's it. So going back to like the, the, the extreme nutrition science in our sport and the protein comment, um, you know, the, the nutrition science will say you need 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. And that's all you need. That's like yeah, that's, that's like it. 50 grams of protein for like 120 pound girl. Yeah. You're not gonna grow on that food. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, unless you're an ultimate beginner. Exactly. To, for survival and for muscle growth in X study, yeah, that's all they needed, right? Yeah. And then, and then, but they make it sound like you doing more than that's gonna like kill you, you know? Oh yeah, I don't need that oh, much yeah, protein. You're, you're, yeah. I don't need that your much kidney, protein. Your kidney, liver are gonna be. I'm like, dude, it's so it's not. You're never gonna go to a nutritionist common. and they give yeah. you like 100 grams of protein, like ever. Yeah, it's not super common where someone's having, you know, re, like kidney related issues from a little bit extra protein. You yeah. Know? You know, we're talking. Yeah, if, if you have those issues and you're getting your labs checked, and you I, I think like actually Byline did a thing on this, and he's like, it's so like they because they they over exaggerate like these things where it's like they um. Like, all oh, 20 grams of protein a day is like so bad for your kidney and stuff, too. Is that me? And bioline is like, it's so like minimal that it's like, it's not like, it's not going to really affect you that much. And that's the thing is like, I'd rather overshoot with protein because it sits in the stomach longer. You have more satiety with it. Yep. Um, you know, and it's less likely to be, you know, stored as fat. Like, it's just so, I mean, why not do more protein? And then what if, what if that person worked out legs and they could absorb more protein that day? 
and you at least have some available for them, right? The worst thing that's going to happen, really, like, first of all, it is a, bit, a, little, it is a little bit harder harder on the uh, digestion, I agree. Oh, yeah, for sure. But it's like, I, exactly, I'd rather overshoot than undershoot, because yeah. it's like, if you're like, you want to be like anabolic all the time, like, if, as, as the best you can. So it's like, if they need more protein in their body and you gave them less, then it's, that's, that sucks. But if you give them a bit more, then what's, what's, what's they're going to have a little exactly. bit more calories in their diet and to be uh, transferred to carbs or whatever, and then, like, you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, it's, you know, it's, and it's just, <clears throat> yeah, for, for me, like, in terms of satiety, like if you give someone, let's say, a thousand grams of carbs all day long, but so tidy is like not being hungry. Yeah, and then you give them, they're gonna be a thousand, a thousand grams of carbs. Like they're gonna be way more hungry if you give them a thousand grams of protein. It's you know? funny, so you ever get like, like athletes where you like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you'd be like, if you ate that that much protein, you'd be like, oh, I'm so full, you know. But yeah. if like carbs, like let's say that's an extreme example. Let's say 500 carbs and 500 protein, which is still extreme. 500 protein, you'd be like, you'd be so full throughout the day. But with carbs, you could probably keep going. You ever give athletes like they're like eating and then you give them like a bump of carbs and they're like a lot hungrier oh, the next yeah. day? That's all so time. common. So, so common. common. Yeah, yeah. Like you're like, wow, I get like 500 grams of rice today. And then they're like, I'm so much it more starving. On. It turns on. Yeah, because yeah. their body expects it. So it's like, okay, let's burn more now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the reasoning is. They just like, uh, it's like pretty consistent on that too. Yeah. Give them a reefy day and they're like, oh, so hungry. Or they're like, even like more tired too. Like they oh, gave yeah, them more too. like a zombie. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that was a fun question. Let's see. Um, any more, any good ones? We I don't even remember the question. It was a, uh, <laughs> was that the hit cardio? I mean, was, yeah, that, hit cardio. was that hit cardio? <laughs> We're terrible. So, all right. So um, let's see here. This is like kind of a quick one. Do you ever, do you ever fear burn? Do you ever fear burning out because you coach with intensity and work the hours you do? Oh, that's a good one. I think honestly, it's a simple question. I think it's just time management. And like yeah. a good entrepreneur is a very good problem solver and a good time manager. So. If you manage your time properly, and plus it's like, if you love doing what you do, you're not gonna really burn out. Yeah. And I don't really think you can. It's like, I feel like burnout, when people use the word burnout, it's kind of like they, they're doing a job nine to five that they hate, yeah, that's, that's and they right. have to be there. Yeah. Like, then you're burning out. But if you like love like to do what you do, you're not gonna really burn out. Yeah, I don't think there's an amount, because you gotta, here's the thing, like, I think you're, you're in the same situation. Like, in terms of, I think people think of this too much as business, and I think they see it as like business, and like to me, if you have fun it's, doing your job. Yeah, to me, it's not really that, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm never, I, I just try to win. That's it. Every day, I just try to win. It's a fun like, job, though, because it's like, it's not like you're like, it's not like a chore. It's like, it's yeah. it's like a game. It's literally like a game. Yeah. It's fun. It's chess, you know? It's, yeah. a, it's a chess. It's tiring, especially when you got to travel to a bunch of shows. I will say that. Traveling when kills I, me, too. When I go to, like, I've been at 19 shows in, since February, right? And so, yeah, I'm a little tired of traveling for shows. So, uh, like, I told everyone, I was like, I'm not going to any shows until, like, the Olympia. Now, I just need, like, that's like eight weeks away or whatever, six weeks away. So, I'm like, that's okay to take that time, you know? I'm gonna go for five days to San Diego this week and just like relax, but that's like, that's the only time I've ever taken off in like years, actually. That's the first like full vacation I've had. It's like five days, I don't know if I could turn off, you know? I was talking to Kim the other day, he was like, I Can you turn off though? I can't turn off. I don't know if I can. I've I never, can't. I've never been on vacation, I don't know. I've, I've, never, been on, I've never been on vacation my whole <laughs> life. If I'm at the beach, I'm like smoking a cigar, I'm like, uh, let me do a couple of fucking check-ins there. Yeah, I, exactly. I, 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 I can't just sit there and like do nothing. I cannot. Kim said he just did this the other day. He's like, I went to a hotel like three weeks uh, for like There's three no days. There's no way he can relax. No, and he said the yeah, same thing. He's like, you're not going to be able to turn off. Like, but also, you know that like if you don't do the work, then you have to like do more work later. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're better off just like doing it. You know. So I told yeah. So this week I'm telling everyone, hey, I'm gonna take like four days off, five days off, and try to relax. But I don't know. I've never. I've, I don't think you can get if it's your passion. You exactly what you yeah. said. You can't get really burnt out because like. What's the alternative, you know? So I think we have, it's funny too, because we all have this like misconception of burning out and working hard. I actually hate and that term though, burning out. Yeah, <sighs> because let's look at the alternative. Like what's the end goal here, right? If the end goal is this like paradise where we're sitting on a beach and we're just sitting on the beach. and Do you that's ever want like to retire? The, dude, what, how, long is, how long is that going to be fun? Sitting on the beach, like three days, drinking. I never want. I want to. I want to be like Warren Buffett and work till I'm 100 and die. Like I. What? How fun would that be? I mean, you have no satisfaction yeah. just being lazy. I think. I think I could sit on the beach, like, drinking a beer for like. Well, I don't drink at all. So back, it's drinking Diet Coke for, for like. <laughs> You're like not even one minute. Yeah. I don't drink. Yeah, I mean, what am I? Is that really the end goal here? Like, is that the end goal? Because. I, I, yeah, but I, I feel like that's what, the end goal for a lot of people that hate their job. Yeah, that must be because I think we all have this vision of that, right? Like we grew up with this vision. Oh, I'm gonna retire on the yeah, beach yeah, in Costa Rica. Yeah, retire 65 and I'm like, like and that's then, awful. And then do what? Like hang out with like the monkeys and the trees in Costa Rica? Like yeah, what but Hannah was like hanging out with the monkeys. I think she wouldn't <laughs> like, like like for example, like my mom's like an entrepreneur like me, and she like runs a company and she's like a boss. Like she worked the day she dies. She worked twenty yeah. hours a day. My dad's been retired for twelve years in the garage all day, hanging out. He has his money, he has his nice house, does his trips. Doesn't work, but he hated his job. Oh yeah. So now he's just like he's like I'm like dad, how are you happy doing this? He's like I will go crazy. He's like what are you talking about? I get to just hang out all day, go to wake up when I want to get to play with the dog. I'm like, 
I can, we are so different because I want to work till I die. Like yeah. for sure. Like my, my retirement goal actually is, um, this is what I told, like I told everyone, I was like, look, I wanted to pay off my houses in my gym and I have that all taken care of. And so for me now, like, I'm like, if everything comes crumbling down and I, or whatever, or I just want to retire, I'm just going to personal train people like maybe four hours a day. Like I, I really like doing that. You know, I like, have, have a really, I hate it. personal training. You? I, I like hate it. it. I like it. I, I actually, that's the one you, thing that, I you got to love it though to do it. Yeah. That's the one thing I miss. And I was and really, it, yeah, I really liked training clients one-on-one. I really enjoyed that. It was fun to get to know people. Um, you know, it's just, you know, it just doesn't make very much sense, you know, in terms of, you know, what are you going to, you know, get like $75 a session or something? Yeah, that's the that thing like with, with like a job too, like this, you can scale. Like we're not paid for our time. We're paid for our, you know, um, our, like our, like basically like we can scale like a lot bigger. Right? Like as personal training, you're getting paid by the hour. Yeah. I never want to do a job that I'm getting paid by the hour because you're so limited at that point, yeah. you know? But yeah, there is a, that's, that's probably where I would retire, you know, where it's like just for fun. Really? You like personal training? Dude, I was, I've. To be honest, I was a really good personal trainer. Like, I'll never, I'll never yeah, come out and say. You're probably good because you liked it, though. Yeah, I'll never come out and say like I'm a good coach. I don't think that that's okay. That but that's that's very ridiculous. You know, I'm not gonna ever like. There's guys that are. I think there's guys that I need to catch up to. But uh, but I, you know, I know I'm better than average. But I'm not gonna be like brag about that. But what I will say as a personal trainer, I was fucking kick ass personal really? trainer, dude. I was I was a good personal. You probably trainer. liked it though. Like I liked, like, yeah. yeah. But can you do like classes like forty girls like doing yoga stuff? I don't like that. I just so, like mechanically and like learning it and all this stuff. Like I was so in. I'm still so into it. And really? I just I would say yeah. I was I was, I really liked personal training. There's not many yeah. there's not many trainers like me like that. He like well I started off like training like kind of like obese people because that was like that I was obese and I lost weight so I started like in the gym training people and I found it like so repetitive and I was like so bored by it because I was just like. I was, I was like trading my time for money. And I was like, man, I can do so much more time with my, so much more, you know, so much more with my time. And I just kind of like, then I coached one girl for competition one overall. I was like, I'd rather just like do the diets and like the protocols and the peak week and like scale much more. But it's like, yeah. it's like um, a Chris Aceto, right? Yeah. He coaches like all the best bodybuilders in the world. Never goes to them with the gym. Doesn't do the training programs. He just like does the diet and like everything else. And he just yeah. like, he, he doesn't even train himself at all. So it's just like, it's like people just like, I think people like like different things, but I think like, Let's say like a boot camp teacher, like like my friend does like boot yeah. camp. Like I'm like you gotta love that because I can't go fake that. It's a lot of energy. I can't fake that. So much energy <laughs> yeah. required for that. Yeah, I've done a few of those and you come out of those and you're so tired. Yeah, it's like two of those in a day and you're like drained mentally and exhausted. The um, but yeah, I like I like the uh, nutrition side of it because it's cool. The nutrition side of it gives you the because uh, the end result is what's worth it for me. Like doing the work of the nutrition as a coach isn't like the most exciting thing for me to like change macros and change foods around or whatever. But like using your brain to produce the result is the exciting part for me. So when it comes to like show day or it comes to someone losing a hundred pounds and you're like, hey, we did that together. That's I love transformations. That's, that's, that's my fun. That's my favorite thing is transformation. You look at the start point at the end point, you're like, wow, dude, this yeah. is crazy. Yeah, coaching, sometimes coaching is like, you know, if if it's for like a big show or something or win a pro card, it's like really rewarding. But then sometimes it's just like a local show. It's sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and you're like, okay, you took someone who was already in good shape, put them in better shape, and now they're back to good shape again, right? Yeah. But like transformations is like I love dude, transformations. Yeah, you you change someone's life. Like they're a totally different person. Now. And like, like I love showing someone like where they started with me because like sometimes you forget because we coach a lot of athletes yeah. and you don't remember where they start. And like I have like my Asian girl who won the overall like at their first show like two weeks ago. I saw that one. That was good. Yeah, one. she yeah. looked she looked like a Olympian on the, a regional stage, and then like. I was like, yeah, and then I looked back at the pictures like eight months before. I was like, oh my god. Yeah. I was like, are you joking? I, was like, I didn't know. You, I didn't remember you looked like that. Yeah, because you see them just yeah, change a little yeah, bit every yeah. week. So it's yeah. like it's like it's like someone who like um, they look at their body every day and they like they don't really notice the change, and then you like show a big transformation. You're like, wow. So that's the thing. Like yeah. you don't. Yeah, you don't. Re- Sometimes realize. I'll forget too because it'd be like it'd be like a year you're working with someone and you just talk to them every week. Yeah, and, and, and they, they look good every day. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, just they change so little, you just forget where they were because it's like yeah. 50 weeks ago and then they'll send you the picture or something. Like, I can't believe like, it. look at my side by side. You're like, whoa, I forgot you yeah, were here. That's, <laughs> like, crazy, you were, yeah. that's so crazy. Yeah, so that's the fun part. But yeah, I don't know. I don't think, reti- yeah, re- back to the retirement thing. I don't think I could ever retire. You know, I don't yeah, think. Boy. It's just, what are you going to do? Also, one other good Purpose point I'm going to make for you guys. Um, a lot of the people that like die in like early, like 60s, 70s and like, whatever it's, it's because they they have no purpose in life yeah yeah the people that live to 100 it's because they always have purpose and like like they always have purpose and they always they're always needed you know what i'm saying like like warren buffett lived to like 100 years old because he's like he has he's needed in yeah. this world he runs a big company people rely on him the second you're like at home and like no one really like needs you for anything you're kind of doing your thing like you lose purpose and you kind of like just die away yeah. And, yeah. and like a lot even, of people die right after they retire i yeah. i have like a you know who it is i have like a 77 year old friend and like i spoke and like i talked to him I'm like dude you're like a 20 year old kid you're so sharp yeah you're so sharp and he's like using his phone and texting me and sending me gifs and stuff i'm just like <laughs> dude like you're so sharp i want to be like because he's like he's he's needed and he's necessary and he's like you know what i'm saying like 
he just has a purpose in life. So like he's yeah. gonna live a lot longer than someone who just kind of at home like watch TV all day and just sleeping. Like you yeah, just kind of your body just dies. People die like within seven on average like seven years after retirement. Like the, the percentage is super high of people that die within like. It seven makes sense years. though. I think that yeah. once your mind goes, you kind of just your body goes too. Yeah, I think that, and that's the thing is like coaching, like the burnout thing. Like coaching gives me purpose. You know, people depend on me, and that's what we say too. Like I have thirteen coaches, you know, and they depend on me. You know. Working hard and staying good and gives me purpose. Yeah, because without you, they don't have. Yeah, yeah, it makes me happy. And these people have, you know, they're buying houses because of the what we're because what yeah, the hard dope. work I used to do, you know. And it's like it's cool to see, and it makes me really happy. Like uh, one of our coaches, G, just bought a house. Tori has two houses. Doesn't it like, make you happier than anything? Oh, yeah, it's so when, cool. when my like, like employees like make like more money than like like I have uh, one employee. She's like an engineer. Uh, she's like an aerospace engineer and she makes and she has a, a huge degree and she's like makes more money off posing coaching than the engineering job and, like that makes me so happy because yeah. i'm just like dude like we did this together and you're like you're so good at what you do that you're able to like i don't know like and but she still does it at the time like your side business is like better than your real business it's yeah, crazy like exactly. that's that's awesome yeah and it's like it, it's a, it's a cool thing and it makes you have purpose and you want to work harder and all that so yeah i don't think i think that it does come down exactly what you said you know the you're like giving back to it eh? like i like yeah, I, lo- yeah. I love i love seeing other people succeed i yeah. like i love it the giving back things really cool. actually i was telling laura lee uh yesterday she, she's she's out here and she's like i um she she had a bunch of boxes moving boxes she had some stuff here she's moving to miami and um, she's like, I have all these clothes still. I'm gonna donate it to Goodwill. I was like, don't donate them to Goodwill. Like, give them to me. And like, cause I go like, I'll wear them. I give, well, I know I give, yeah, <laughs> bombshell stuff. No, I give, I give, it's funny is I give them to like the homeless people I see out Doesn't here with all the socks. Yeah. Well, there's like, yeah, and it's funny is that all the homeless people, cause I'm downtown, so I, there's there's a lot of homeless in the downtown area, you know, in the in Vegas. But I give them like we have all we had this sock drive, so I have all these socks, and I'll give them new pairs of socks. They've all the homeless people wearing bombshell in the street of Vegas, dude. I, they're all wearing my clothes down here off of off of uh, Karen Street and. Um, Dude, I have Sir a funny Harris, story. Harris, someone, I, I, so get, funny. I did that to a Team Atlas store on town, and someone said they saw a homeless person with a Team Atlas store. <laughs> I was like, dude. I gave, like, a whole bunch of, like, my older ones. Like, I gave, like, 50 of them to a homeless shelter. I uh, like, dude, like, what? But it feels good, though, right? It's, yeah. It's good. Hey, it's free advertising. Good for you. <laughs> you're killing, I don't want to advertise with that. You're killing the homeless work here, bro. <laughs> He's like, maybe he's like, everyone's like, he's feeding them a little too little. Like, that guy over there looks really oh skinny. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's you so know what's funny? funny? Like, kind of like, if we're not, I don't think we're philanthropists. I think that's kind of like a very, like, excessive word for what we do. But I'm saying, like, once you, like, have, so much, like, you see all these billionaires or philanthropists, it's just like, you just want to get, like, once you, like, you, you know, like, I'm sure at the start, too, you were less, like, giving, like, when you first started coaching. Because yeah. you're just like, it's all you, it's all you. Then you reach a certain level, you're like, dude, I, I still need a purpose. I want to give back and make people happy. Like, that's how you, you get happiness and seeing other people succeed. Because it's yeah. like, like there's, there's other like drives in life too. It's just like it's like when you're younger too and you don't want to have kids and you're like, man, I want a kid because like it gives me purpose and I want to like give to someone else and like let them experience life too and like give them, you know. Yeah, I've I've uh, I went through that. Mine was kind of like more like uh, religious for me too. I was like, because when I got to like a certain level of success, I was like, and this is kind of not a side I really ever talk about, but it was more like, okay, what is? I was like, what is your purpose for me? Because I keep having success and like you have to want to be using me for something. And it has to be for the better of humanity of some kind. And it can't just be putting people on stage. So, like, why am I having all this success? Like, you expect, like, there's some expectation on me that I have to live up to. Or else I feel like my success will stop. And so, um, that was kind of like, those are, like, the talks I have with myself, right? It's like, a, like, I better be a good person because so much is coming to me that I better put it back out. Yeah. Because you can't just keep it all. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's a really greedy thing. Then you get older and no one likes you and you have no friends and family. It's like, what's the point? Yeah, I just feel like there's a res- there's like a social responsibility for someone who's like excessively successful, you know? And so... Um, but that's I, why a lot of these billionaires give back a lot of money. Yeah. Some of them don't, but I mean, generally like... like Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, what go a, fuck yourself. What a dick. Dude, he didn't give any money to anyone. He had like billions of dollars. You know what I mean? I was like, dude, that's yeah. such yeah, a... Yeah, but was he happy? Probably not. Um, no. no, even when like, even when Bill Gates, it was funny because there's like a story of Steve Jobs talking about like Bill Gates and um, they were like, one of his friends, they're like mutual friends was like, because he was, he was always mad about Bill Gates for like stealing his ideas type of thing. And he was like, uh, Bill Gates, he's like, well, is it, well, look at how, how great Bill Gates is doing for humanity. Like, he basically, yeah. like, he's curing some diseases. Oh, God, you're like, going to get all that yeah. queuing on people up your oh, ass. I know, right? like, and then, and then, uh, and then he, his, Steve Jobs was like, yeah, but he's doing it with my money. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're just, why are you so, like, miserable, so you know? Funny. Like, so, uh, yeah, no, that's, I'm glad that you do that. Stuff. That's a crazy level of people, like, that achieve, like, so much, like, people don't understand, like, it's not about the monetary, um, you know, gain sometimes that like, entrepreneurs like, do you think Elon Musk really, like, has a, a goal of how much money he wants to make? He doesn't care. Oh, he passed he's, that soul. He just yeah. loves what he does, and that just makes some money. And it's like, 
if you're doing a job and you're like chasing like a dollar sign, Oh, you're nice. not going to get there nearly as fast as if you just love what you do and just like perform or produce like good results. Like yeah. that's just how you can't have a monetary goal. That's, just a, yeah. that's so stupid. That's always been. It doesn't work. My business model for the team lead has always been win excessively. That's it. Win that's excessively. What you do. Yeah. yeah. Win. And then every day. And then you sell. It, it sells itself. You don't yeah. got to do nothing. Oh yeah. It's like no one ever. It's never like that. But all these sale, billionaires you know? don't chase like dollar signs. They don't. Yeah. yeah there's no. It just point. comes. It's it just true. comes. Yeah. Exactly. And that's that's the thing. When I was young, I was like begging to get clients type of thing. And then yeah, but everyone starts like, there. Yeah, yeah. And then you just then you start performing, and then it just you know it kind of comes. I have it's a funny like, story. Like I went, I was literally going like Facebook groups, like garage sale groups, so like find like moms like he and i went through like my high school list on facebook like kind of goes with like good shape I'm like you ever consider doing god competition really? that's like how i started yeah like full like grovel like in a gym like going around people like hey have you ever like considered competing They're, like not really and like like oh my god dude i charged <laughs> my first guy 120 dollars to do like a uh, six month prep with me Jeez. yeah it's just like yeah, <laughs> it's but, like it's, a month. yeah but it's like yeah but it's like he's trusting me to try and like bring him in you know what i'm yeah, saying yeah. it's just like so it's like let's see how i start and now it's just like kind of just like when you have the success people yeah. kind of just want to be yeah part well of. i mean i worked I mean, when I was like personal training, because um, back back then I wasn't doing like a lot of nutrition programs. Like I wasn't doing any online. Like even ten years ago, I was doing them all in club, like writing them down and stuff like that, and like meeting with the client. So they'd have to train. You went to the club and started getting, making people diet. Well, I was, <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, uh, so it was like two, like two people were coming to the gym like two times a day, and people don't understand. They're like, oh, prep is expensive. I'm like, prep was way more expensive before. Because you had to it? come, oh yeah, because you had to come see me twice a week at the gym. Online helps helps our business yeah. so much. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, imagine if you're talking to a premier trainer. So I was like, you know, obviously I was a premier trainer back then and you'd be paying $75 a session. Well, you'd have to train twice a week. You'd do one personal training session and then you'd do like one nutrition and posing session and then you'd get whatever workout we could on, on top of that for that hour. So we're talking $150 a week. So it's like $600 a month. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you can get programming for like 300 bucks a month, you know, something like that. So it's like, yeah, it was, it was more expensive. Yeah, but it's then. also a bit less hands-on too. Like yeah. spending your time with them, like training them is a little bit more work. Though. Yeah, yeah, definitely more work and he has less volume. So like, um, so back then I was like trying to get clients. So even, you know, as recently as 2000, like probably like 11, I was, I was like sitting behind tables and like doing free body fat tests at the waiting at the front. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. but premier training, you know what I mean? You know, just waiting for body fat, doing free body fat tests. I used to charge like $10 and do it like when anyone, you know what I'm saying? Just like it. And then like, two thousand, I think it was like 2000. Isn't that the most fun part of a business? Yeah, I like that's the That's when starting, I had the most fun, dude. The starting? Of, yeah, like, that's so fun when you start and you don't know anything. Like my first business too, I was so fun, then you get good, it's like, oh, it sucks. That's why I want to start <laughs> something else. I'm like excited, you go to learn, then you get good, you're like, okay, what's next, you know? <laughs> the, um, yeah, I think 2012, I think is when I started going online. I think that was when I went online. And it's funny because I saw someone doing like online online programming wasn't really like happening at a high no, level no, like no. almost no one was doing it, and then um, I was I was dating this girl and she was like she was like one of the first people who did it. I started dating her, and she was like, "Oh, I got to send my pictures in to my coach." And I was like, "What do You're you like, mean? What? You send your pictures in your coach?" She's like, "Yeah, he just send my pictures into him, and then he just adjusts my diet, and that's how I do my check in." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Like, I was like, it was so foreign to me. I was like, "That's stupid. How are you gonna see someone?" Yeah, but you should think that too. When I started too, like it's yeah. much better in person. You're like, yeah, you can be 100 percent accurate online. Yeah, just it takes training. You have to just do it a lot. You know, you every single pro I've ever made has been online. Yeah, every single pro. Uh, I'm trying to think too. Well, I had yeah, some you're probably you're probably 90 percent though. The, but now now it's like all oh, yeah, now it's all sure. online. I haven't had, yeah, I don't train anyone in person. You know what's anymore. crazy? Like being a coach, like back. Well, that's why it's so big now because you can do it online. But like back in the day, like Chris Cito, like. In the 1990s, like every big barber had to like fly to Gold's Gym, Venice, yeah. and like do check-ins there. Like you can't scale that. You can't no. scale that business. It's like yeah. impossible. And it's it's just inconvenient, hard for the person. No, you got to move your whole life nightmare. for a month. To, yeah. How are you going to take your job like not work for a month? That's why bodybuilders back then didn't make any money. They'd have to yeah. like quit their job and live in Gold's for like six weeks. You know what I mean? And like you Even know, longer they all live there. Oh yeah, it's crazy. So it's like yeah. So now it's now it's better. And but like, this helped the, this helped the industry grow a lot though. Yeah. And as soon as you learn how to like train your eye to see people online, then yeah. you're 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 good. It takes a while though. To six, see six years. It. Yeah, like, yeah. And that's why people don't get it. Like that's why they fail and they go online. Like it's not easy to see someone right. To see straight is so. And hard. you like learn like different lighting. Like I make all my athletes get a specific ring light. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every single athlete and I bring it to shows the ring light too. So like I make specific. That's cool. Yeah. So it's like you learn different tips and tricks. Yeah. And it's like I have a thing where like stand in front of this and like I made a post like don't like the shadows and like I and then I have like pictures like let's say like a lowly does a perfect check-in with like lighting and then another girl has like darker I put them side by side like I can't see anything because the lighting doesn't reflect like this and I make yeah. them reset it until they get it properly so it's like you can be a lot more accurate if you have like a system of like what you make everyone do and that's it's just, cool that's actually a good idea I actually don't have that I have a I say take the same lighting and a, and a contrasty background like I do this whole thing but it's not like that that'd actually be a good idea yeah it's not about because like people have like that. yeah <laughs> whatever that's good. Yeah, yeah that's how it goes right you, that's exactly what we have these I started learning too. like you can steal this tip but like I don't think I don't think I've ever seen any other coach do it bring ring like the shows oh my god 
that I got these. I saw this like uh, I used to bring, I have like big big ring light bring to a show, and then at that Tampa show uh, with Laura Lee, these tiny people were using these small rectangular ring lights, and they stand in front of them. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I put Laura Lee in front of them. I'm like, it literally is a stage light. So okay. now I buy two and I bring them to the shows. And I literally have stage light in my room. That's cool. It helps you peek so much better. It's it's like that was one of the smartest things I've ever done. Huh, I'm gonna yeah. check those out. No, yes, do, no, yes, do that. Like, yeah, it's yeah. gonna help you a lot. Like, you, like hotel room lighting is terrible. Oh, it's and, like, terrible. Yes, yeah. like, okay, I literally have, like, it's all side, almost every show, it's I, all side lighting too. Yeah, side like, lighting, or like shit went over the bathroom, or yeah, like, yeah. and it's like, look different. Like, I, I have girls like go in the parking lot, like, literally. I'm like, go in the parking lot with me, like, do your posing. It's like, it's just so annoying. And it's like, different times of day with the lighting. So I bring like two bring ring lights. I have a, sh a show setting. Show setting in my room, and I can see at Hurley, and it's like it. That makes a big try. That like yeah, yeah, that's. I cool. even sent you which ones to buy. Like they're really small and easy to carry. That's nice. Yeah, oh that's a big portability on it, right? Yeah, this so, is that was a game changer. So uh, anyway, uh, we're at an hour and a half now. We probably should stop the podcast. We got to. You want to go this, for yeah. another three hours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I think we could do this again. We probably do this yeah, again. So. Like this is pretty fun. Yeah, hopefully we get out to you can come out to Vegas again and do it in here. But um, keep. So what we're gonna do? So send these questions in. Keep doing them. I think we'll probably do this online too. Honestly. Yeah, it's fun. It's pretty if we'll see the feedback from this and see yeah, how people like it. We flow it. pretty good together too. We flow pretty good. So I think yeah. that's good. So um, yeah, I guess that's it. What's up? Well, actually, what's next for you? You're coming out. Where are you going next? Uh, I'm going to North Americans. I have ten girls doing it, and then I'm going to Laura Lee's show right after that. So where's she at? She's gonna do. We're gonna do uh, Arizona, but we're gonna do Michigan instead because we want Tyler to give us feedback on her judging because he okay. saw her in Chago. So you want to show? We want to show someone that's seen her at the two shows to be able to compare and tell us like feedback. It's like, um, judging is a little bit like, it's, they make it a, as objective as they can, but still a little, a little bit personal preference. And I wanna see the same judge, see her two shapes and tell me exactly what is better and what is worse. That's cool. I think that's more, that'd be more yeah. accurate. Plus yeah. there's other girls like trying to like qualify too. And like, I don't wanna like, deal with that. Like doesn't qualify the Olympia. Yeah, sure. yeah. And then the other thing too, and I, I think that this is a good, a good lesson for everyone listening too, what you're talking about like Laura Lee coming in in different shapes and stuff. Um, and I, I was talking to her the other day out too. I was like, look, keep trying new things until you win the Olympia. Once you win the Olympia, then just stay there. Yeah. But if you're not willing to take a risk, if you're not willing to, to, and I always say, you know, be a genius or be an asshole, you know, because if you win, you're a genius. And if you lose, because you, what was worse then you're an asshole, right? But you have to be willing to take those hits or else you're never going to progress the athlete. And it's not going to be, it's not going to happen. Well, I tried show. to upsize her from the, even though judges told me like bring her in like a little bit smaller. I'm sure at the end they said just grow her legs a little bit, but I kind of like her glutes just like grew like crazy. I'm like, but like everyone loved her Tampa look, but then I realized like she was a little bit too big for bikini. So now like this new look we're bringing in is like totally different. I'm like, and I just started checking yesterday. I'm like, I see her every day, but in person I was like, I actually like this look better than Chicago because yeah. I know this is much more the bikini criteria too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like it's gonna be a lot easier to peek because she's a lot leaner in the legs, a lot leaner in the glutes, and it's like I don't like it's a fat, it's a water. I don't know like. Trying to like flex your legs, kind of get like more lines, and now you don't have to do anything. You just look good like you are. Yeah, like it's and so I, much think that, I think that just the, the lesson that people can learn from this is like it's gonna take some trial and error, and it's like no matter what level you're at, yeah, it's very rare you nail it right off the bat. You yeah. gotta learn, learn, learn. Learn, yeah, and you're, no matter how what level you're at, you're always gonna be trying new things, and you're always gonna be taking risks. Like just don't take the safe approach every time. You gotta try new things to see what what they it's like. It's a good example because you know? Ashley's look almost the same every show this year, and last year and the year before she looked very different. Ring shows. Yeah. Some shows I know she was a lot fuller, a lot softer, like. This and that, and I'm sure you're like trying different things. And then this year, like, I know the luck, just bring it in every time. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. now it's, well, now it's the, the good thing is it's a lot more defined too. It's like they want fullness now. And before, yeah, we're, fullness is we're, very important. Yeah. We were transitioning in like 2018 and 19, we we're transitioning into that almost skinnier bikini look, yeah, right? Flat, it's, flat, small waist. Yeah, yeah you know, we're so, like that transition year was like, what do you do? You know, what do you, they said, oh, get her bigger, get her smaller, get her bigger, mm, get her yeah. smaller. And you're like, what do you do? You know, so. Um, so now we're like, okay, fullness, balance. You gotta be full. Yeah, gotta be full. Glutes. Full first, balance second. Well, balance first, full yeah. second. Yeah, and then and then it's and like conditioning all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's, so it's like it's it's a lot more I think easy now too. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's just it's gonna take times. You gotta be willing to take those risks. You know, if you're if you've always been thought you had to be softer in a show, like and you haven't been winning, try coming try in really it. hard. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. What's the worst gonna happen? You lose a show, and then two weeks later there's another show. You know, and just yeah. do that. You know, so. Um, so anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one because I saw her shape yesterday. And there's no one at the top level that's been consistent all the way through and like one. Oh, no. No look, one. Look at Issa, like at yeah. Olympia, you know, yeah. first to six, and now she's back to looking yeah, the same exactly. shape. Exactly. Like, you try different things. Like, what do you want to do? Exactly. Yeah, no one's been, I mean, you can even see the year, um, like Angelica was like soft, softer in the glutes one year at the Olympia, and then she came to Arnold was like crazy hard in the glutes. Like, it's like she's trying new things. She's Even when she was winning, she was trying new things, you know, so yeah. I think that's important for people to understand that it's going to take a few times. So anyway, uh, good luck on that. Yeah, that Hopefully great. you guys get a, get a win out of that. And, uh, I'd like to see you at him. Yeah, for sure. Okay. It was fun. It was a good yes. time, dude. And we're going to see uh, David Copperfield tonight. Yeah
<laughs> I'm like, they're gonna do like the bowling ball thing with the with the knife and like the yeah, flamethrower. Yeah. Like Adam, why don't you go try you that? Put a real knife in the bag. Nah, 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 you're way too nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny, man. Uh, yeah, it'll be fun. So anyway, I'll talk. Thank you guys so much. Keep sending those questions. And we'll do this again. And Thanks, guys. I appreciate it a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.